Hello, everybody. It's your boy, Joseph Rothschild, a.k.a. M.B.T. And wh where's my good friend? Where's he gone off to? Oh, there he is. The one, the only Gage. How are you doing, Nim Nim? I am stoked to get into a top 16 cut of the MCS for the week three here. Very excited to see our duelists battle it out to get the title for this week's Master Circuit Series. How are you Myself doing today, man? as well. How did you enjoy the Swiss rounds? I enjoyed them a lot. We had eight grueling rounds of Swiss, during which we saw a whopping single Cash Tira player, which, you know, has, has kind of become uh, expected at these events. Um... The end result, of course, was that we did not have any Cash Tira in our top cut. Three weeks in, new pack out, and it looks like everyone is not only itching to play the good decks from the new set, they are also itching to win. Let's head over real quick to the scene that includes the top cut graph so we can have a quick discussion about the decks that made it and the decks that didn't. So in our top 16, we've got four Pearly, four Dragon Link, four... Mac, which refers here to a pile of cybers cards that usually includes the new firewall stuff two vanquish soul and then one a piece of labyrinth and makanko what are your thoughts about this gauge i think this uh this pie chart's far off from the gloom and doom people were having just a few weeks ago with the release of cash tira i think everybody expected that to be the dominant force in the meta but watching the pie chart shape up to this uh kind of gets me excited man nice little even split between three of the different decks there i'm glad to see vanquish soul popping up you know the newest released archetype i'm um, really curious to see if uh, any of the underdogs there though labyrinth only taking up one spot after winning last week's about well, last two weeks uh mcs how do you feel about that one i think it's kind of an expected result as the decks that are playable in this top cut are very aggressive. Um, Math Mech, Dragon Lake, uh, they play through so much and get in so hard, so fast. They don't intend to play a long game. And those long games are where decks like Labyrinth can really, really shine. Um, as a result, I, I, I do really like this format. I think probably if I had to pick a deck that's maybe a little overrepresented this week, it'd be the Math Mech one. I, not to... Uh, toot firewall singularities horn too hard here but uh we watched um top 16 competitor i wish i was dead in one of the swiss rounds and uh let's just say that that game was uh, a little messy <laughs> yeah a lot of the games we ended up watching with math mech they didn't feel like they panned out how we wanted to i think the, even the very first match that we watched today we were like "Ooh, this doesn't do a hell of a lot right <laughs> like so no. uh, really excited to see four of them claim the top spot there but i'm also yeah. uh, i'm vouching for that uh the makanko player the one makanko lone duelist see if they can clutch it out maybe come out with a nice finish you know i was so ready to just write off makanko forever and never have to read any of those cards but now that it's getting consistent tops in the tcg as well and it won a ycs i think probably we have to take it seriously and obviously incredibly good in a best of one format where you can all but guarantee you more than anyone else are going to get the side of the die roll you really want yeah, hopefully that can uh, bring our one Makako Duelist to, to victory here, maybe in a nice, better top finish here. But there's a couple changes that we have moving into top 16, rather from the Swiss rounds. Do you want to go over it for anybody that might be new to the Master Circuit series? Right, so if you are familiar with the Swiss rounds, you know that they are played in uh, Best of One, uh, which uh, is analogous to how uh, Challenger Cups and the like are played. Uh, but as we transition into best of three, uh, we switch to untimed rounds for Top Cut. Um, and uh, like normal YCSs or high-level events, the loser of each game is going to be able to determine if they go first or second in the uh, games that are played uh, post-board. Um, I'm really excited to be able to show off uh, for this match, we've got two players, one of which is playing one of the decks uh, from the uh, new format. Um, we've got a world's competitor, uh, Judo Yu-Gi-Oh, right off the heels of a, a fantastic victory in Decade's tournament series playing Vanquish Soul. They're going to be playing MCS P-Shift. So we'll just jump into that right now. It looks like they have already started. All right. Really excited to see how the decks end up putting together their side decks, too. Most duelists will say that the, the real games are won in the side deck, the games two and three. So that's definitely going to shake up how these decks perform here. All right, let's just uh, get these names a little more centered and stake your soul. Your nose is mine. Reveal Dimension Shifter and then Chain Dimension Shifter. Yeah, you love to see it, baby. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> oh. 
love that you get to do that. It's so funny. And we'll just get Borgor, and we've caught up to live. From here, if we have a Darken Hand, we can draw a card. Even if we don't, we can make Rock of the Vanquisher. Uh, just trying to find a way to rise in here, I imagine. I wonder if going for Borger is always the choice there over Dr. Madlove. I think it depends on the rest of the cards in their hand here, too. We'll see in just a minute what we oh decide God. to follow up with. And two shifters, probably not exactly oh, where you want to be. Double shifter. People see shifter Wonderful and frequently right. just think, oh my god, the game's over, shifters come down, you know, no one can play through that. Uh, frequently, if you have a shifter, it means the rest of your hand might not be so good. Not so uh, for wow. our duelist this time, who has also drawn Raisin. That's going to be met with an Ash Blossom, but uh, I think you're probably fine just linking this bad boy off. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of just chilling, right? You can link the Borger and then pick it back up so you can bounce that Raisin back for a different turn. You can link the Raisin off if you want to. Tons of different options, right? Like, that's not the end of the world. Yeah, the linking Still the under Borger shifter off, too, of by course, the way. Uh, not possible under the Dimension Shifter because it'll be stuck and banished. So instead, Ooh, we'll right. just resolve the effect of Stake Your Soul so it goes back to the hand and we can execute the play that you just mentioned. Yeah, my bad. Uh, however, um... P shift here is on Pearly, and Pearly does not like playing under Dimension Shifter, but has the capacity to do so. You kind of lose the ability of Lily to go into like the guaranteed cards um, in the graveyard that can translate into powerful uh, plump pushes, um, but your Pearlies can still completely function. Uh, you just have to uh, be a little more careful with expending resources. And um, above all things, you do want to get to a position where this VS player is not going to get another crack at the board because they will take it. See how far the pearly player can get with just the my friend pearly here. Whatever else is backed up in the hand. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we will be getting a, a pearly in that case. Oof. I love, um... Uh, pearly is one of the most interesting decks in Master Duel because it has the highest concentration of cards that are almost threes in terms of average amount in deck. I believe Delicious is one of the only cards I've ever seen that has an average of three. I hope it hasn't changed. <laughs> I, I hope it hasn't changed either. It wouldn't make much sense to. A little um, shown off in I don't that, know if uh, you guys saw reveal, yeah. Shadal Hedgehog on the <laughs> reveal there. Kind of an interesting tech, right? Yeah, so many of you are probably familiar with the um, the Dark World package played uh, to ensure that you always have material in hand to pitch off of the quick play spells. But Shadows do functionally the same thing. Uh, you can pitch Beast, Squamata, or in some cases, Hedgehog. Yeah. What do you think is better in that scenario? You think like you would rather play the Dark Worlds or the, uh, the Shadals? What kind of extra value do you think you get out of playing the Shadals specifically? Between you and me, I would rather play neither of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking the same thing, but I, I just like having more good cards in the deck. And if uh, if you got a pitch like a Nibiru, eh, no big deal. All right. So depending on what else is in the rest of the hand here, you can maybe just like put this pearly. There into, it is. Like, Average number per deck. The three cards. When was the last time you saw that? And this is kind of interesting. Um, here, going for Delicious Memory on the Pearly rather than on the Raisin. I think correctly understanding that there's no reason to go for a Happiness OTK because... Um, how am I going to say this? Judo Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, can simply tag out the monster that's affected um, and prevent you know the OTK from happening. What did we uh, discard off of the Delicious Memory up there? Went to the Magicalized shop. fusion. Whoa! No, <laughs> Another no wacky. Thing. Well, uh, that explains Maybe why we're that's the benefit the, uh, to the shadows. The shadows. <laughs> Make Winda pass. The goo has been revealed. Very good kitty there. Three exceptional choices. Oh, amazing. Wow, those are all great choices, right? Uh, I imagine you take beauty here. It's just so. Wonderful to be able to suck up the raisin and force the burgor pretty early. Mm, but it's the whole thing is a, it's a very difficult choice because you know um, unlike most pearly setups where like you can invest a bunch of material into a noir and if it doesn't pan out, well you can always get them on the crack back when all those cards return to your hand from the mi amigo. Um, you are all in under shifter. Like you are not going to be able to cycle cards back. 
um, taking here the happy instead. Uh, as you're like trying to figure out a way that you can force out the raisin into the Borgor and then OTK with the happy, and you have to be able to do it. Judeu. Gotcha, Arm Santos. That's what we'll call him. Got it. Revealing the happy. We are again. going for the pearly happiness. Here we go. Note that the delicious wasn't even activated on the rise in at first, too, so... Maybe our intention isn't to go for the OTK. We probably can't because there's the Borger in hand. You just yeah, we can, back, we can always but... tag out the monster. And we're doing it here. Says, well, if you don't want to target it with the Delicious, I will just go ahead and summon Borgor. And here, putting it in an attack position, banking on there not being a second Delicious in hand, saying, you know what, uh, I'm going to prevent you from searching at all with the Apparently Happiness. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, now that we've activated a monster effect, That's that turns on the rest. Yeah, absolute disaster here since a monster is on Judeu's side of the field. We're going to be able to add that Speller Trap to hand. Tactics talent sounds like a really it good has one. To be, yeah, can't just go for a pearly card. It has to be a normal speller trap. So, is hey, but I'll take tactics. Normal? No problem. It's 25, what, 2,100. That's not close, but we can always link it off. No. You could also just go... I was going to say go to draw two and then try to pick up another delicious or something to throw underneath the happiness, right? Yeah. We go for the Borgor here, draw a card. Who knows? Maybe it's Maxi. All right. So Will we, we see the Borgor activation from P Shift? We are. We're seeing it. <laughs> we have a way. We have a Squamata. <laughs> Broken. Hey. <laughs> Value. Yo, wait. They got almost both modes of that thrust. They got half the draw to and they got the take. Oh, this is kind of crusty. Uh, we know that uh, P Shift's deck is playing some non Xyz. I mean, I would imagine that the Magicalized Fusion is a Verte target. So we have a way to get the Borgor off the field. But I don't know how, if we have a way to get to a an absolute game winning position. Uh, if we have another quick play, theoretically, we could put it under the happiness. We could draw a couple of cards, convert it into like a two activation Zeus, which seems pretty powerful. We'll see. I'm thinking the Zeus is probably Ooh, the disastrous. safest disastrous. And down comes that the is a Ruiz miserable. Worm. Not only targeting the uh, Dimension Shifter, but also emptying out the graveyard for a potential follow-up Dimension Shifter. <laughs> uh, I should mention a, a follow-up Shifter that we know they have from the Burger reveals. Yeah. This always felt like the... Um, too, because, okay, like... Go ahead. What do you do? Like, the Druid Swarm gets summoned, and then what? Do you put your own... Do you, you just put the opponent's Borger into it? They both get banished. And then, like you said, Shifter on the follow-up? Yeah, but refusing the redeclare here is really rough. It means you, um, you don't yeah. get access to Zeus. This happiness doesn't convert. Now, if we do have a Delicious in hand, we win the game on the spot. But I think that uh, Judeo Yu-Gi-Oh! has the 100% correct opinion that uh, that would already have come down. Yeah, I think if we're uh, triple tactics taking the guy on the field that's preventing us from making this play in the first place, you have to have the read that your opponent just doesn't have anything else to follow that up on. Unless they magically drew some mystical out off of the Borger draw. But yeah, it looks like we're just going to be putting back down the cat. We go into main phase two here in a little bit. This silly little shifter play is uh, what felt like one of the least fair parts of Flu Wanderees when that deck was big. Like a uh, Stree banish your shifter, go for it. It's just so frustrating, and it's crazy to see a deck that can do it again. All right, uh, both these monsters away, and we're going to take that fat 100. How are we doing on time? How are we doing on time? Good. Nice little 79. We're going to pass over, and this board, man, if I'm Judeo, I'm looking at it, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> we'll I'm take it. not even worried about it. <laughs> yeah, no Sounds problem good. Anyway, uh, shifter? <laughs> anyway, shifter. Okay, so we do have another one. If this is a beauty... 
which it is, um, we at least have some form of interaction, which is nice. Uh, but a board that we expected was going to end on like a two activation Zeus and maybe a beauty is now going to end on one interaction. So if you're Judeo Yu-Gi-Oh, you're like, okay, can I play through negate my raisin? Uh, probably. Speaking of, here he is. Slam down the Raisin. Goes for the effect. You know what I like about Raisin is he really is a horrifying looking card. Oh, was that no activation he is, uh, there? He, he's kind of wacky. Yeah, there we go. Reveal Zhao Long. Ready? Here it is. We drew Zhao Long for turn. Three, two, one. Oh my god. We really did. <laughs> Yo, oh my god. So what we're doing here actually is activating not the effect to search, but the effect to destroy all other monsters in the column. That's going to force out the beauty activation uh, from a position where we can still extend, um, which means we are now out of points of interaction. <laughs> here we go. And what do you know? We revealed the card to activate something, so down comes Xiao Long. Maxi has made it into the graveyard after not being allowed there for a turn, thanks to uh, Dimension Shifter. We're about to see how good this deck plays under Maxi, though. One of the strengths of the, the Vanquished Soul deck. It's very non-committal, right? It doesn't have to do too much to take control of the board. You know, I think there's a possibility that you just go combat here. I think so, yeah. I think you maybe just go tussle. Get rid of those two things. The Link off the Ryzen... We're gonna go rock. rock. We're going for it. Because, I I mean, I guess it feels a lot less good to pass while they have a Mi Amigo up. Like, if they didn't have the ability to do that, it would feel a lot better. Chat saying no shifter. Terrible news. <laughs> I think you are very likely to see it again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna reveal two fire here, a raisin, and what two else? We don't fires. know anything else. Oh, a rise card is something up in else. hand. Okay, okay. We'll take it. Dust Devil here would be pretty powerful. Of course, as would the trap card. Oh, we're getting yeah, Caesar Valley. Both of them are pretty good options. And we're going for it. <clears throat> I like this a lot. Uh, like Caesar at least contests the Mi Amigo, which means we can eat it, can eat the board, feel a lot better about our position. Oh no, we're just going for the Earth yeah. and revealing Earth Insect. Earth. But we did have Earth Fire Dark. We could have gone for a, uh, could have gone for the pop, but hmm. up not to. Okay, we'll go battle phase. We'll take care of one of the X Y Zs. Yeah, chat might be right. We might not be paying attention. It could be happy protected. Oh, that's true, too. Something I would always forget about. Me, because I'm a lesser duelist. Obviously, I'm not in the MCS top cut. We get to my friend for one here. Are we waiting to use the shifter into the, uh, the, the opponent's turn here? I think we're doing it because we can go shifter, CL2, maxi. Okay, I can see that. So we wait for them to commit to a quick play before we do it, regardless. Unless we want to play around the second talents. I think that's pretty, pretty weak. <clears throat> At the street coming down, notably the street only protects things the turn they're summoned. So. Turn their special summoned even. So yeah, any errant pearlies summoned. in hand are going to do less than nothing. I think uh, Judeo Yu-Gi-Oh here thinking about activating Caesar Valius so he can get into a position where he feels comfortable sending the dark and the earth in the hand to the graveyard. You're grabbing another my friend. That makes the my friend a lot less powerful. The My Friend Pop, rather. Ugh. 
And it's a weird position to be in versus Pearly. You never want them to be in a scenario where they have happiness available. But if you are in a scenario where they have happiness available, having rock on field is pretty darn good. Yeah. Oh, we are going Definitely combat feeling here. This is very interesting. Why are we going combat? So we while have Rock is on field, delicious? you can only attack Caesar Valia. So you have to get the read that there is a delicious in hand. Yeah, and if that's the case, you wait for the activation of the delicious, and then you're able to activate Caesar Valius to pop the happiness. This is a thinker. Yeah, that's Here's like Judea disastrous, actually. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard. You kind of have to proactively pop it. But if they chain I, happiness another happy and memory that delicious. was hard drawn. And there's the maxi that you were talking about the maxi that's yeah. being held in the hand there. That's why we've kept the shifter around for a little bit. And it looks like it made it back. Then we're gonna chain the shifter. This is gonna prevent the um my friend Pearly from proccing in a way that's advantageous. We're gonna chain Sleepy, it feels like we're chaining Sleepy exactly to get the maxi out of the hand, but we have to take it. Like, it's such a profitable maxi here. Yeah, yeah. Because you stop your uh, the happiness from chaining to be able to put under. Potentially, you'll get some maxi get draw, value by the end of the turn. But yeah, if, yeah. if the hand includes, like, a happy memory and delicious memory as well, we do just lose here. Like, it's a, it's a huge gamble. Mm-hmm. I think uh, P-Shift here just deciding how he wants to do this. I think we know he has a beauty because it was added off the My Friend last turn. So Yeah, we watched. That was the only here card that was able to come from the graveyard. Can theoretically change the math on the happiness. But it can't get it into a position where it survives the attack. If he doesn't have either of those cards, I'm going to question why we didn't start with maybe my friend to yeah, pick we, up the one of the pieces we needed. I wonder if we're missing something. All right, this something. is going to resolve, and this is not going to look good for this happiness that's about to get crushed. Yeah, and not only does it look bad for that reason, you know, it looks bad because uh, nothing goes to the graveyard until the chain is done resolving. And what do you know? Uh, dimension shifters in the chain, so we won't be able to use any of the spells maybe happy on the per lily it's really rough <sighs> yeah it, it's very strange it, it felt like p shift was playing to force judeo Yu-Gi-Oh to play proactively but did not have any reason to do that it was like oh he's making him play proactively so that he can then get a huge blowout with happy delicious but just doesn't have those cards. It's like next to next to next leveling, trying to get him to make a mistake, thinking he would only make that play if that was what the grip looked like. But obviously it isn't, because this chain is finishing resolving. P-Shift here deciding if he wants to draw off the uh, Sleepy, and pitching a card that Lily can't target feels really bad. Drawing a card off the Maxi. Yeah. Caesar Valius here can pop, I think, the Happiness. Oh I no, we're going to grab the Pearly. Says, no, that's going to die to combat anyway. We'll just grab the one so that it can't... Yeah. I think we think uh, there was a happy memory activated last turn, but I think it's protecting the My Friend. So Yeah, that was my understanding as well. Zhao Long's coming down here. So and that's going to give them a re-declare, and the happiness doesn't die now, but it's a cold comfort because it does. that's still the only attack it can make. Yeah. Zalong can still change the battle position, but this thing is still dying to, to just being punched into the Cesar here, so really no reason to, right? No, we're electing not to read it, Claire. It's yeah, really strange, yeah. you know, the only legal attack is on Caesar Valius anyway, but we still get to read it, Claire, because the number of monsters changed. So. Yeah. Now, chat has figured out a very interesting scenario. If it is a Curry Carabate, this is... I mean, it's not even great. It just gets Caesar Valius, right? And we've traded our combat step for it, which is our only way back into this game as someone who is both under Maxi and a Pearly Happiness. And Dimension Shifter. Don't forget about Dimension Shifter resolving, too. Hmm. 
three different names is kind of weird to see. Makes you feel like they're maybe a little flustered or the hand is not fantastic. Uh, we are going for sleepy memory. <clears throat> and I think probably, yeah, doing our best to prevent that from resolving, using Jiaolong here to reveal the cash to your rise heart. Uh, oh, and the raisin to grab a vanquished soul card for next turn, but also to prevent the happiness from activating in chain and attaching the sleepy memory, maybe getting a little closer to something like a noir. A oh, ways off from that too. Yeah. And we haven't, and of course, our battle phase was completely flubbed. We don't have a way to, like, convert this happiness into a Zeus or anything like that. Right. You know, straight it, I, to the banner zone. Chad is, is kind of, <laughs> they're kind of spitting here. Um, it almost seems like the pearly meta is specifically designed for a vanquished soul that has Agov cards to be a competitive option. It's a combination of a bunch of quick effects that uh, chain block. Um the complete nullification of the happiness OTK by way of Rock of the Vanquisher, uh, the ability to play Maxi, you know, a Master Duel specific thing, um, the way the Cash Tira hits have fallen out, making the deck uncompetitive as pure, but fantastic as a splash, uh, and its ability to play uh, powerfully through Maxi as well, here just giving the opponent one draw and ending on a board that's about to win them the game. I mean, in the hands of a skilled pilot, it really does look like the choice. Oh, are they forcing an anima here? All right. That's fine. <laughs> I think you're okay with that. A little bit of a mistake with zone placement. Just could have scooted it over a zone there and been in a much better spot. But Maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe they were like, no, please make the anima. That's an extra yeah, draw for me. please take it, right? You know, the Borgor turns into yeah. pot of greed. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Revealing mad love here. Draw a card. And we'll chain Caesar Valley. Vanquish gotcha, been, idiot. Uh, <laughs> We've Vanquish never activated this effect too. this turn. I'm learning right now. Having a quick effect to respond to every single one of the activations of the pearly quick plays has been invaluable too, right? Like it's yeah. kept them off of more than enough materials to get to that noir. Yeah, crazy. Nice anima. <laughs> Now, that Lily wasn't converting anyway. The Dimension Shifter has kept him off anything in the graveyard here. Trying to end main phase says, Whoa, 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 I'm not done yet. Rock of the Vanquisher, let's bring that bad boy back out. And guess what? Now you've put all your monsters in the same zone. We can activate Raisin's effect on my own turn to pop the entire board. They will get banished and we'll get in for lethal. It was actually an anima bait. I can't believe it. That was the most incredible play. The line up, please. Up there. Oh. End phase will just uh, go ahead and equip a Sleepy from deck. We get a draw in standby. It better be the best draw in the world. <laughs> Peep says, Animal was an unsafe uh, move in neutral. All right, we're going to the end phase. Raisin, reveal, fire, and dark. Let's uh, pop these bad boys. Here are the Rise Heart and the Heavy Borgor. Waited until that uh, Stray Pearly Street resolved. Uh, so that we could get one more copy of Sleepy and Banish. Uh, we're getting... Ooh, we're getting the Pearly from Grave! Oh, God! He's not gonna last long. Another card off Maxi. Yeah, it's not gonna help too much, too. That Dimension Shifter absolutely <sighs> incinerating kitty. all the material and stuff. A bad kid. Not even kitty. a hit off the Pearly, Come too. on. I think this is literally just lethal on board. All we have to do is normal summon Mad Love, and we can just make it happen. Yep. Really well played there. Game one from uh, Judeu here. It... Honestly, I, I hate to say this. Sometimes you see an incredibly good player um, piloting a deck and you think to yourself, it is kind of the world's competitor difference. Like, these are lines we were missing. <laughs> They're clearly lines that P-Shift wasn't uh, super comfortable with. I mean, we're legitimately getting skill gap. I, it's taking the fighting game archetype for us to see, you know, a fighting game style of differential between players. Yeah, very impressive the way uh, they navigated this board. Really expertly, too. I think uh, the entire interaction in the battle phase, all the different sub-steps and stuff, uh, figuring out when to activate was definitely crucial. Mm -hmm. You're just going combat, right, just uh, gonna... taking as few moves <laughs> as possible. Don't want to get beat by, like, a silly hand trap. Uh, 29, 24, 18 should be lethal. 
And uh, Judeo Yu-Gi-Oh! will be moving to game two, up 1-0 against the easiest deck to board against in top cut. Not a great position to be in if you're P-Shift. Yeah, very curious to see what comes in for the game two here. Uh, curious to see if anything actual, like, do you think a lot of players really sided good for Vanquish Soul? What's like a go-to side deck card you could think of? Well, that's the thing. There's there's no wealth of understanding that you can pull upon from like TCG uh, because the deck's been kind of mid the entire time. You know, um, it's not like you can just say, oh, this was historically played against Vanquish Soul. So I expect this will be good afterwards. Um, so uh, I have sent you in order uh, P-Shift and then Judeu's sideboards. So we can talk a little bit generally about them. Uh, it's a lot of the stuff you would expect. Uh, cards that are exceptionally good exclusively when you know what you're playing against. Unsurprisingly, um, Judeu is, uh, I would imagine, very prepared for the pearly matchup given what's in the sideboard. Um, I struggle to think what's actually good against VS. Like, there are some hands that Nibiru is super strong, but there's also a lot where it's terrible or it does nothing. You know, there's some hands where, like, Harpy's Feather Duster is a card you want to be considering because the trap card Snow Devil does so much. Uh, but there are other hands where they just play without it. Um, it's a really malleable deck, and that makes it hard to uh, uh, to feel comfortable citing anything in particular. Legitimately looking at these boards, I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything that's really insane against VS. Yeah, I think uh, Judeu definitely has, like, the upper hand, having a lot of, like, the, the outs you would see against Pearlies, right? Like mm -hmm. that. Uh, you would already see, like, these thrusts and these heralds and stuff to be able to take care of the big noir. Um Nothing really that present besides, like you said, Harpy's Feather Duster, which is a miss half of the time. You know, if they don't open the floodgates and stuff and still can just play their game strategy, doesn't do a whole lot. Um, so I, I think Judeo is definitely favored going into the game two. And then also, even if we make it to game three, especially in game three, um, yeah. lots of cards popping up there that are easy win buttons against the pearly matchup. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, I don't want to name names, but uh, a lot of trap cards <laughs> that, um, that read, uh, read very, very well um, if you know exactly what your opponent is doing. Um, I do like a lot of individuals in chat are talking about Floodgates being like Otikbu, Ogozen, O Rivalry. Keep in mind that in Master Duel specifically, because it's best of one ladder, Konami's tried to keep those cards out of games, out of places where they could be decision making. And uh, as a result, they're like at one. I think all of the like classically good, powerful floodgates, Tikbu rivalry goes in skill drain. I think they're all at one. And um, mm -hmm. good, <laughs> it's going to make sideboarding a lot harder. Yeah. I think Tikbu's at two. But another thing to point out is uh, we've talked about it a lot throughout the entire stream. Pot of Prosperity yeah. being at one has shaped the playability of a lot of these fringe decks that maybe rely on those um, non-engine cards that they can't get to immediately. Mm -hmm. Having Pot of Prosperity at one reduces the ability that you're going to see those side deck cards or those blowout floodgates. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's really, really tough to to go into Vanquish Soul here expecting to do well with just generically good cards, right? What if you just don't see them? Yeah. Um, it looks like we're taking just a second to board here. Um, I, I guess I can talk a little bit about some of the other matches that are going on right now. Um the uh, interesting ones I guess we can talk about are I Wish I Was Dead is playing against Pusheen. Um, uh, Trishula is playing against Dolphin Fed. Quantal is playing against Alan TCG, who is the other VS player in Top Cut. Uh, yeah, um, and uh, Got Bene, who is on um, Mikanko, is playing against our undefeated duelist uh, Menethil. Uh, so good luck to them, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Pusheen and I Wish I Was Dead played a match earlier, actually, in Swiss. So oh, they're not getting the, the run, run back, back there in Top Cut. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't like hearing that. <laughs> Dyer asking if Generator made really? Top Cut. Oh, despite what you saw in all of the um, mid-roll footage, there was no Generator in Top Cut. This isn't the uh, regional. <laughs> okay, these two have not jumped quite. in. They're just doing the coin flip now. I imagine P-Shift is going first. We'll jump in as soon as we are available to spectate. We are about to hop into match number two in this best of three in Top Cut between these two incredibly, incredibly good players. Chat, are you guys excited for the uh, the game two here coming up? We get some hype in chat, some poggers in chat, possibly. Well, what's a hype possibly? emote you all can use here? You know, I threw in a bunch of emotes recently. Um, I finally got around to, uh, we, during the subathon, filled out the emote slots. So, 
Uh, I, I filled them all up. We got some good ones. Let's see some rare emotes during this one. All right. Early off to a strong start, right? Summon Perlily. That's what you like to see, Game baby. On. Oh, and Street? Oh, you shouldn't have. Now it's just a question of how many quick plays we've got. Mi amigo. Okay, so we do get a bit of information off of uh, what's being revealed here. Um, either Judeo or Yu-Gi-Oh is a toggle Andy or they have nothing. Triple Delicious is a pretty standard pick. Um, you know, doesn't telegraph a particularly powerful open. So uh, if you're Judeo, you're probably expecting to see Delicious Memory and not a lot else. And maybe some stuff out of the board that might frighten you. Yeah. Oh, that average number of cards per deck on Delicious three i mean i've Feels never so seen it on any other card it's unbelievable pitching thrust boy that's not what you like to see all right how is this kitty uh, unless kitty. you have the read that he's a jadeu is a, a toggle andy like you said though oh. 2.98 on the uh, the white cap but almost a bad kitty there but uh good enough we'll take the per leap now, this is a rough one um the miss on the pearly makes me think that if there's not another quick play spell, our play is literally just target delicious memory pass uh, and then pearlily into a two activation noir, which is like good. It's probably good enough, but it means an imperm here or a veiler on this normal summon to pearlily would just end the turn. Looks like we are not going to get it. Taking a long time to summon this card. <laughs> Go plump. Plumpy here can equip the Pump it up. triple tactics thrust. End phase, we can equip a sleepy memory. We can draw one, flip the per leap in standby, draw a second card, pass it back to Judeu and say, please, please, God, do not have drawn anything from your sideboard. Oh, God. That the is a uh, very good prosty. one of that we've been talking about. Wow. That's a big one. We'll be able to dig six cards deeper, try to find some of the side deck stuff to be able to, to ensure our Noir can stick on the board here. And honestly, this is one of the reasons why I feel like Pot of Prosperity is probably too strong a card in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Went for three there, by the way. Ash, Tactics, Maxi. Jesus Christ. Everything under the sun. I imagine we'll be taking the Maxi here. Um, but it just yeah. feels like... This card is, as Jaxel has said, uh, reinforcement of the army for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. In post-board games where you've found your combo, ending your turn with Pot of Prosby for like anti-spell or like a hand trap that wins you the game on the spot, doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. Oh, man, A little happy really memory rough. there to slap another material underneath this clump. And that means we're getting to Noir even before the leap is active if we so desire. Uh, we can target the My Friend Pearly, always good to prevent it from being destroyed. Pitching the leap here says, I don't need it anymore. And we'll uh, summon another Pearly. If this Pearly finds a name, we could also theoretically end on like a beauty. Uh, double happy is Ooh, a it did. little weird. Yeah, um, because we don't really want to end on the happy, we might as well just go for a Princess Sprite. Okay, one time Princess Sprite Beauty. We'll pitch the maxi. We don't need it. Nope. I don't like this card for that reason. Both times we've seen it on stream, it's missed. One sent a maxi, the other one sent this ash here. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people started playing the ghost trick line, even though it introduces all these bricks to your deck. They're like, I'm sick of missing on Princess Sprite. I want to do something with my ones. We got the Noir here. Five material underneath it. It's going to get a sixth by the end. Of, oh, sorry. Six. It's going to get six a seventh seven, by yeah. the end of the turn. Importantly, we'll have one activation and still will not be able to be affected. Oh, my God. Do we know what that set card is? That's the Happy. It's known information. Yeah. Uh, but that Happy does trade for, like, destroy X card, so. I'm going to put a sleepy memory underneath there. Pick up two cards here. That is going to turn on with? Triple Tactics Thrust, but 
Setting the happy is big there because that allows us to pull out the black cat to uh, nullify a herald. You know, I wonder if it's even Can worth not it? drawing here. Like, you're already in such a commanding position and you're still losing to the same stuff. You already have a maxi in grip. Um, you're going to draw a million cards anyway. Why put yourself in a position where you can lose to Kurikara? That's fair. Um, Kurikara is kind of scary. Like, if it was two but, um, draws, I would get it, you know? Yeah, I guess it's just playing to your outs, right? Because this board already beats, like, Harold specifically. And uh, if you don't use the Noir, then you you also beat the Kurikara. So, yeah, maybe there is a little bit of a kind of an argument Durandal. to not do that. Randall. Well, that's one way to get Ryzen. Yeah. Pretty cute way to do it. There he is. As a Rescue Ace player, I understand your pain. Can this deck make Ice Hold? Uh, I mean, it can. I don't. I don't think it would ever. <laughs> There's no real reason. Oh, Horizon, great start. We haven't seen him with it yet, and I mean, it helps that we have a million more ways to get to him than they did the first wave in the TCG. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. Like my understanding of this deck is, oh, Ryzen is a historic brick. But, uh, or a historically hard card to get to. But Master Duel players will never understand that because they get to have Xiao Long immediately. You know, Stake Your Soul is always going to do what you want. I've seen a whole bunch of wacky ways to get to it. A couple small world Ugh, targets I'm, to be able to find Ryzen. I think like that's the point where you have Dogeron. to realize you're coping. <laughs> like, that was, yeah. that was for, uh, for Rescue Ace not to talk about it so often. Um, that was the point where we had to take a step back and be like, what are we doing with our lives? Like, this card is terrible. Okay, so we were able to activate the Ryzen effect to pop the uh, the Princess Sprite. Now what? P shift's probably okay with that. I don't care if I lose the the rank one. No problem. Still got to deal with my unoutable Noir here. Wow, that's really strong. That's huge. Yeah, that's really strong. <laughs> So that's not going to be able to pop the uh, the Mi Amigo. And uh, the Happy Memory can force it to not pop the street. The street isn't doing anything here, really. But this forces out the, the Happy, protection. which means if we have, like, another piece of destruction, we can maybe do something. Yeah, keep in mind, Triple Tactics thrust into Herald is still super on the table there. Yeah. This you have to be the really, really, really choosy about what you're spinning in games two and three. Yeah. Right, we're going to let it happen. We are targeting the street. Let's see if we get a And discard. we're going to summon, too. Happy memory protects twice. And then I imagine we'll... Fire the lily. Man. But now we're in a position where the thrust is on the table. Yep. Now, the weird part about thrust from this position is you need to be able to contest the lily. Right? Yeah, I can't just go to battle phase with the rise in here because it'll yeah, get spun I mean, away. Gonna. And then you'll still be in a rough spot here. So let's see what happens here. All right. So we're going to go for the uh, the lily here to shuffle the rise in. That's going to just resolve right away. Evenly. No. Okay. All right. Well, the thrust looks like it's not going to be doing too much here. Can't quite take care of the board here. You're telegraphing it pretty hard. Anything like, we said? What's the alternative? Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely have the read that that's in Judeu's hand here. And there's no way, unfortunately, to be able to get the value off of it now. Your nose is mine. Reveal the mad love. Does this allow us to summon Xiao Long out? What do you reveal? Yeah, it does. Here comes the Borgor. <clears throat> Borgor draw card? Sure. Revealing Mad Love. It's just a weird position to be in, right? Like, yeah. you, you need to find a way either to get the Perlily off the field 
or to force the noir to activate one additional time. And that's just like not ever going to happen. And since yeah, it's it gotten back like with five to. material, feel very free to activate straight pearly street at end step, draw a sixth card. I think we have one more sleepy in rotation. It can get from grave. Cannot. Or Throw graveyard. No, they elected to get delicious. <clears throat> Just trying to make it as big as can to go for a game push, I'm assuming. And played that really well. I mean, uh, kept the uh, the happiness down to play around the uh, Herald. Uh, you know, they haven't won the game yet, but it's uh, pretty much over, right? We're going to take a million damage here. Yeah. Unless Judeu has some, like, ridiculous hand traps to be able to back up his hand. Um, this is just, like, a clear-cut line to taking control of the game. Battle Fader goes hard here. Yeah, this is a great Ash. We know that at least one of the cards in hand is dead uh, because it was added off Lily. Oh, but another delicious. That will do it unless we have something crazy here. Yeah, that's really strong to have just in the hand there. Yeah. I'm gonna throw it underneath the happiness. And I think this is lethal on board. What's the graveyard look like? Oh, we don't have one to tag into yet. Oh, we, can, we could use Hedgehog to grab Squamata and just go to combat. <laughs> Done. Oh, I mean, yeah, that, that'll do it. I was going to... If you put that uh, Delicious underneath the... No, wait, you can't do that. Never mind. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're doing. That's the play. Let's go. Just normal summon. Normal summon the 1800. Awful kitty. Another bad kitty. Yeah. All right, Lejin, in for damage. Let's go, baby. <laughs> That'll do it. Uh, this is this is lethal, so we'll need something if we want to survive. Clutch Pluton. No, I think we are far beyond playing Pluton. <laughs> we we had a little too much Pluton discussion earlier today. I think I think we're fine without it from here on out. All right. Honestly, P-Shift played that very well, recognizing that coming in from the side deck, there's probably going to be a lot of outs that he has to work around. Kind of picked his battles, said, like, I can totally work around this Herald if I just play carefully. And it really paid off, you know? Absolutely. It's uh, it's hard to um, kind of describe. This is <laughs> not to not to speak about Jeopardy constantly, but it's it constantly happens in Jeopardy where, like, someone will answer a question incorrectly and just shut down for the next two minutes and potentially miss out on, like, hundreds of points. Uh, you really have to have a mentality where, like, if you make a mistake or you play poorly, you just roll with the punches. You just keep slugging. Uh, you kind of have to be a heavy hitter in scenarios where you expose yourself as, like, uh, not knowing an interaction or playing a, a turn incorrectly. And um, that really is what separates a lot of the good players from the great players is the ability to um, just keep moving when you do something stupid. And after that first game, you know, we were pretty down on P-Shift, but played that one absolutely textbook, super expertly, around as much as possible, and um, was rewarded for it. Uh, you know, <laughs> you love to see it. Yeah, I think it's also important to say, like, the games two and three, right? Like, you can win a lot of games off of just variance in best yeah. of ones, right? You can just open better than your opponent cheese them. But when you're in a best of three, right, you got to bring your A game. You got to make sure, like, you understand these interactions. You understand how these side decks are operating because... Uh, those are really where the all the the Yu-Gi-Oh's played in those games two and three. So, uh, I think going into the last game here, we're gonna see a just a really close one. Um, who do you, who's your money on? Uh, like I said, I think uh, Judeu. I, I think Judeu has it. I think from, my money's on Judeu too. From here, I mean, uh, Pearly is very happy to go second, and um, uh, their sideboard has a lot of cards that will help the deck go second. Um, but Judeu's been playing out of his mind around as much as possible. I mean, won the game one convincingly through Maxi in the opener. I mean, it was really, really impressive stuff. Um, I do have to, uh, we do have some reports from the other tables. Uh, this is one of the last ones still going, actually. Uh, we have, um, Got Bene defeated the undefeated player and Mikanko has made it into top eight. Wow. We'll probably watch that for the next wow. one. A really interesting deck, uh, to cast. 
Um, Quantal uh, has eliminated the other VS player, which means that Judeo is now VS's only hope of making it into top eight. Uh, Scar Black, who is on uh, Mathmech, has defeated Me Is Smart, who is also on Mathmech. <laughs> I'm sure that one was a blast. Um, and Trish has actually lost uh, to Dolphin Fed, who is also on Mathmech. Uh, rough, rough break for Trish, um, but he played very well this entire tournament. Uh, oh yeah, finally, a couple of those other games we watched from Trish. He definitely showed his stuff. He knows what's up. We have a negative beating uh, Duke in... Oh, wow. Uh, Labyrinth versus uh, Pearly, which means that Labyrinth is now officially all the way out of the tournament. Wow. We only had one Labyrinth player up in the top 16 cut, too, so yep. tough break for them. Yeah. Won the last right. one to get bodied in top 16 combo. Well, at least it's not Cash Tira. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it happened. Um, for it those happens. of you who are watching the VOD on YouTube, I have great news. Um, after our tournament is tallied by the individuals at uh, Master Duel Meta, I think, fingers crossed, it will be responsible for kicking Cash completely off the tier list. Uh, we did it, folks. Congratulations, Reddit. This deck is going to ruin Yu-Gi-Oh! forever to this deck is unplayable, full combo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, we can unban Raceoff then, right? The field spell? Mm, I can come to, I can come to three. Then. Let's not get too crazy. Uh, what about I Wish I Was Dead? Am I stupid? Um, I Wish I Was Dead is currently, I believe, in game three versus Pusheen. Uh, and Pusheen is on Dragon Link to I Wish I Was Dead's math mech but they're on like an adagonister build i would love to see that versus mikanko because i believe the mikanko list is not playing kaiju but i'm not sure yeah. hmm. all right really excited to see this game three yeah me too um, vanquish soul going first too it's gonna be i think it's gonna be tough man yeah. is that a couple floods <laughs> I'm, looking, looking nice. I'm looking at the side deck yeah it's gonna be a little difficult <laughs> it's gonna be uh a toughie that's for sure yeah <laughs> Uh, perhaps Judeu will simply brick. I mean, the deck is capable of doing it, certainly more than Pearly is. <laughs> but, uh, <sighs> yikes. <laughs> wow, and you just stare at cards like uh, Rise Heart, and it's like, wow. I mean, they have just so much in this format in particular that, it, mm -hmm. that they don't have consistent what do you think is uh PCG. What do you think's on the horizon for Masteril now? We just got full powered Vanquish Soul in one set. Do you think there's anything that's like, what's next? What's next? You know, I. It's so strange. I I don't know why they don't do this more often. Like, um, I think that it's important to dole out like support over the course of months. Like, I think that Cash did need a couple of months of like the bad wave one support so people could play with um, Fenrir before they gave them a Rise Heart. But for deck build pack archetypes. Why make them play the bad version at all? Like, just give us full power Rescue Ace. Give us full power Nouvelle. People are really enjoying full power Vanquish Soul. I wish they would just do it more frequently. Um, I think the next I do big... Think, um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say the next one. I haven't seen Manadium yet. There has not yeah. been a single Manadium support card released. And uh, I'm actually curious how they approach that one. If they do give it the, the Age of Overlord approach that they did for Vanquish Soul and give all of the Manadium support in one set. Or are they going to piecemeal it like they've done for some other ones, too? I still think that deck has some legs with its uh, older support before getting the newer stuff. But, um, hey, if they give it all at once like they just did for this archetype, that could be another, like, competitor. I, I do real quickly want to say, apparently Nouvelle did get the Agoff stuff. It's just so bad that, like, no one has played it. Um, shouts out, though, to uh, people saying that uh, Dune support Rescue Ace would break the format. It would be a competitive deck, uh, but it would not break the format. You got to understand, you know, that was a top five deck in that format. Uh, that's a completely fine place to be, especially for people who are already sick of the decks that are currently topping. Um, I think that uh, the deck that for some reason is completely absent in Master Duel is um, Super Heavy Samurai. Like, we're just not going to get that. Oh, or yeah. What? Where are they? <laughs> I completely forgot about that one, dude. Been a while since I've actually seen that deck played at all. So, uh, curious, you know, between uh, you and me, uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> all right game three we're gonna obviously see vanquish soul on the play here let's see what they set up ah, that bike mate clean no oh, not like this no oh that's vanquish soul baby 
We watched uh, yep. Judeo Yu Gi Oh draw Ryzen, I think, nine games back to back, and here we are. <laughs> now, All right. notably, let's see what P Shift has, though. This could still be an FTK. If the set card is D Barrier, I think we're fine. <laughs> if it's like Max C D Barrier, we're okay. Triple Delicious, not what you want to see. Teak Boo, maybe? I think it could be D Barrier. It could be. There can be only one. You got to think there could be some cards in his hand still, like Shifter, but that doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of Prage in the chat right now. Dang, to have both of the Vanquish Soul players be eliminated straight out the top 16. And not like I'd hate not it. bad I'd hate players it. Not, either. Not like this. this guy was a yeah. top four worlds competitor. <laughs> like, come on. All right. All right, now's the time the for if we have the, uh, the Maxi or the uh, Dimension Shifter. And it looks like we have neither. Pitching the thrust, just confident, confident that there's says, no interaction. Yeah, not going to be a problem to me. <clears throat> this is kind of weird. Um, getting per Lily here, we already have everything. You'd have to get the trap here. I wouldn't feel too bad about that. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're getting, we're getting the doggy. Well, this is an interesting position to be in because this is impermeable. Good kitty. We got happy off that. What was the other find? I missed it. I, I missed it too. <laughs> Chat says, it's like Rise Heart Caesar double Borger or some shit. Don't put that evil on me. It was delicious. <laughs> so we've got two deliciouses in hand. All right. What are we working with, buddy? Oh, <laughs> okay. See you next turn. <clears throat> okay. All right. That's what you need to see. You need to see something that says, uh, okay, I'll see you next turn, like you said. Oh, no. Play passed back. There is a card in the format that could answer this. Reboot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really clenched myself there. So that's, like, cool. But now we know the brick isn't on Maxi. It isn't on hand traps, really. And you have to think, like, what bricks can this deck produce that aren't, like, on the back of Shifter or Maxi or something? And it's like, wow, they could have drawn Borgors and Xiaolongs with no way to proc them. And it's like, those are all disastrous. Continue with no names. I mean, this deck, when it bricks, it does just lose the game. Important to note that Durandal's now live, though, actually. That's a, a card that it, maybe oh. if it was just sitting in the hand, we can use it around. It was actually a 10,000 IQ corner. play. We needed a Durandal target. <laughs> we kept in Durandal going first, and we need a target, which is why we only committed to that. We're setting something. All right, 200 life points. Can you check the time for me? How much more time do we got in the round? Uh, no time in top cut, maybe. All right. Let's go, Judeu. If, if I see Durand, I, I will be so happy. <laughs> <sighs> rough. Wow. Wow. Very rough. You really rough. can't win them all. <laughs> that, that, that is the... Uh, that's awful. Not like this. No way to raise in. No way to start the combos. I mean, not to draw too many inferences from what could be a toggle bait, but it looks like we don't even have access to Maxi or Ash or any of our targeted negation. Imperm would be live here, theoretically. It's, uh, it's a rough one. But this is what playing a deck like Vanquish Soul is like, you know? It was like what playing uh, Kash Tira was like. It's like what playing... Uh, what like flu on is like rescue ace is like once every four or five games you just draw the cards you want to search instead of the cards that do the searching uh, and pearly mm -hmm. is a deck that uniquely does not have that problem it plays this like 19 starters in the quick plays and they can dump all the bricks out of your hand 
We're off to the races then. Yeah, and these are cats activating their effects that weren't special summon this turn, which means they aren't protected by street, which means we don't have anything like a, uh, a piece of targeted negation for them. Uh, finisher rank number 11 on a pearly happiness. Let's see if we can get it up to 10 this game. Oh! Play pass back for a second. Oh no, just to decide on the uh, Mi Amigo. We do have an Ash Blossom. We do have an Ash Blossom. Is that enough? A little bit late on it. I doubt it. Not during that. I mean, just would have liked to see that earlier. Bad. Yeah. This plump is about to get very plump. Oh, yeah. Plump it up. And enough to make the Noir. Will we see X Pearly Happiness? I think it actually kills here. Is it in their deck? <laughs> I don't know. Let's it? find out. You probably have space. I mean, what was it? Wasn't it rank 10 in the finisher rating or something like they that? They are on Surely it. Surely a lot of people were playing it's it. Rank, it's like rank 3. Plump saying, yum, 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 yum. Delicioso. Mmm, ice cream, so good. <laughs> pitching the leap. That, uh, th th that's when things have gotten bad. The leap pitch is like, come on, man. Can you at least pretend that I might have an Abiru or something? Yeah, I'll take another, my friend. Thank you. Oh, one time X Pearly Happiness. Finish it off. There it is. Yes. <laughs> Finisher rank eight. Boom. 1561. That is almost the whole deal on its own. Oh, we can almost get in with the little <laughs> with the little doggies. <laughs> Alright, let's just wrap it up. And a 2-1 for MCSP shift will propel Pearly into top eight. Vanquish Soul completely eliminated alongside our world's competitor. But Judeo Yu-Gi-Oh! played a damn good set. Just really unfortunate about that third game. Yeah, absolutely. Don't let the fact that they got knocked out in top 16 discount the fact that the uh, the Vanquish Soul deck performed really well. You know, oh, little 10% um, healthy showing, but a couple players played Judeo really good. Apparently is streaming, uh, and the hand was revealed at the end of the game. Valius Borgor Borgor Dust Devil. Hello, everybody. Once again, it's your boy Joseph Rothschild, aka MBT, and I am so happy to be here with Nim Nim bringing you the top eight of the Master Circuit series. Gage, are you excited for this one? Oh, extremely. We just watched an electrifying top 16. Uh, I'm really excited to see the top eight. There's some interesting decks coming up. One that I think we're seeing in the uh, in this matchup right now, right? That is that is correct. So, uh, for our last matchup, we watched a really impressive uh, Vanquish Soul versus Pearly game, and we will be watching Pearly again. But they will be playing against the single copy of Mikanko that made it into top sixteen and cleared the undefeated duelist in their last match. Uh, if TCG is anything to go off, this is going to be a blast. So uh, let's go. Yep. Excited to have to see how the Mikanko deck shapes up in the best of three scenario. Obviously, taking the top sixteen. It's got some game. Let's see. It's easy to think that this deck is like a flash in the pan because of the best of one, and it always gets to go second. But uh, it is it is looking to frequently go first as well. I am very excited to see if they can show off what they've got. Uh, Pearly player winning the die roll? I mean, you can't... I'm not really sure. Wrong start, though. We'll pick up the my friend, me amigo. And here, just deciding what we want to grab here. Um, we get a lot of information off of this. For those of you who are wondering what else really has made it into person. top eight, we've uh, we've got two Dragon Link duelists, two Pearly duelists, three of the four duelists playing a Cyber Spile, which we've labeled Math Mech made it, and uh, these two, <laughs> the Mikanko duelist. That was a. Sleepy, sleepy, pretty.
probably delicious already within the grip. Don't need to pick up another copy of that. It's always weird seeing a sleepy pick. Like, sleepy's a good card, but really restricts your plays. Like, here, for instance, activating the sleepy and converting it into a lily means we have to, like, go even further for the delicious to matter. Um... Which is why apparently we're leading beauty. That must have been what we got off of the uh, sleepy, or otherwise I imagine we wouldn't be picking it. Go for something like a happy mm -hmm. instead. Uh, if we pitch the delicious, we can go per lily here for street before we commit to something like a, a plump. Curious to see what kind of board negative decides to go for here. It, I mean... Obviously, you always want to assume that you're going against blind, but at this point in the tournament, players probably know what each other are playing. Yeah. So if you have the knowledge that you're up against the Makonko matchup, I know typically a popular card is to go into the Lyralistic, um rank one to protect from battle and stuff like that to make sure you just don't get demolished. So curious to see if maybe we adapt the board to fit the matchup or we oh just go for something generic. What was it? Double delicious memory? I'm based on the very outcome of the uh, my friend Pearly. You have to kind of expect that the third one's already in hand, but very weird to be like, "Yep, they're all here." All right, so time to reveal. Uh, this Pearly player is on the Ghost Tricks, and when I say the Ghost Tricks, I mean hard Ghost Tricks. They're on a lot of Ghost Tricks. Theoretically, can do the so cute boss combo. So we will see if they elect to. Uh, they're going to lead Doolahan into Angel of Mischief. 55% win rate on this card. <laughs> I And you got to imagine that that's like really impressive because a significant amount of those games are by Ghost Trick players, right? Like She must have oh, like yeah. a 90% oh, yeah. win rate in Pearly to counteract the 4% win rate of that deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and these are all taken from the Master rank, so a lot a lot of Ghost Trick players. In the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. That's that's where they assure me they've all ended up. <laughs> all right, we're going to activate the effect here. Um, if we don't have it already, we're going to go grab Ghost Trick Big Shot. Looks like we are actually going to Infinite Impermanence, the Angel of Mischief here. Um, that's an interesting time to do it, uh, but pretty understandable. Um, we haven't seen Lily yet, and uh, probably what Lily is going to be grabbing is the street, meaning this Imperm is going to have pretty limited utility for the remainder of the turn. Here it prevents UDF from coming out at minimum, and a second Noir at maximum, but it's still going to kind of screw up the ability for uh, a card like Herald to actually do anything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alright, we're gonna, as expected, delicious pitch, delicious. We did end up drawing a couple of those. Here comes the Lily. We'll go for Lily. We'll grab I Imagine the Street. We can Lily target this delicious, delicious, add delicious, and pretty memory, but we still need one more quick play if we want to make it to that Noir. Looks like understanding that we are not going to be able to make it to Noir, we're just going to grab the Leap instead and then use the Lily targeting the Delicious and then the Plumpy targeting the Pretty Memory and the other Delicious to go into a 4-mat Plumpy into a 5-mat Noir, which is good, but doesn't draw any cards, just kind of sits there. I might draw a card or two in the, uh, the standby phase if we put any Sleepies underneath it, but you said there wasn't any in the graveyard, but... None in the graveyard... Doesn't look like the yep. field spell is going to be making an appearance. Apparently the Ghost Trick community is in civil war. They do not accept the pearly players. The Ghost Trick re community refuses to change with the times. You gotta think of it like Ghost Trick, uh... Like, um... Fairy. He's like, no, Alucard. All the kids these days are on TikTok. And Alucard is like, no, the old ways are the best ways. What happened to tradition? By the way, I gotta point out, Ben A playing the Makonko sleeves just proudly. <laughs> just says, yeah, just I'm not telegraphing cards on the table. I'm just trying to OTK you. <laughs> Let's see if it's capable. Let's see what we got. Well, that's a good start. Uh, so, yeah, um... I guess we can probably reveal this because uh, <laughs> otherwise you would have seen it. Um, Got Benny is not playing main deck kaijus. 
people expect, oh, this deck has like a crazy pearly matchup. You just tribute off the pearly. Uh, but Got Benny is like, no, I want to play good cards in those slots. And for what it's worth, they are playing a lot of really good cards in that slot. Huli with Fire Dance, start here with pretty good. <laughs> Fire Dance start, pretty good. Oh, Mayawashi Dory, not exactly where we want to be. So it's what's funny here is we are not seeing the immediate rank up onto uh, the Noir because a Pearly Plump is also pretty high value in this matchup. You've got a lot of spells that you want to stick in the graveyard so you can activate their graveyard effects. Uh, Mayawashi Dory is one of them. Uh, Ceremony is another. And if you just eat those, sometimes you get away with a little more than you should. Yeah, we're going to go combat gotta here. Be careful. It's going to punch in, but Plump's got a nice little ability to, after activating a quick play, being able to banish things non-targeting. So that would remove all those equip spells. I think we can Pick infer nice that we take don't of. have an equip spell, though, because otherwise... Oh my god, never mind. I got absolutely owned. I was thinking, I was like, why wouldn't you make the Noir? They just elected not to. They were like, nah, I'm going to go leap. So we get to go Plump here, yeah, and then banish a monster on the field, non-targeting till the end phase. Here we'll go the Huli. All these go to the graveyard, and then what do you know? Plump can just suck them up. Yeah, that's one of those situations where, like you said, it seems like a no-brainer to just make the Noir right away, right? But um, having the matchup knowledge, knowing what our opponent's playing exactly, you can kind of like uh, twist the board into something that favors you, right? Oh, Might not be the most obvious here. pay, but it's something that helps out. Lily grabs street, ensure that we don't have to worry about anything next turn. Oh, we're just grabbing Pearly. Said, I don't need Street. Street Schmeet. What are they going to do? Target my monsters with equip spells? Hey. Not a problem. Second main. Just plumpy eat these. Oh, no. <laughs> Go to end phase. Plumpy eat these two. Flip up Pearly. Shuffle these two. It seems pretty uh, cut and dry from here. Yeah, it seems like a wipe. Depends on what you're expecting those set cards to be. See ya. I was going to say, I still think you go for it regardless. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand people being like, Plump is super high value, you need to stick it. But like, you want to be able to contest the like search uh, traps in Makanko. Like, you don't want a card like that to resolve. Rivalry, I think, is the card I'm thinking of. You can just detach all of your own spells here. And uh, just a quick concession out of the Makanko play says, fine, fine. We'll go next. We'll go next. Um, really, really impressive, um, deviation from kind of the standard play for our pearly player, but, um, that's how you get into top eight and, uh, might be how they get out of top eight as well. Yeah, definitely paid off. Curious to see what these players are end up side decking. I expect no side deck cards to be able to deal with the Makanko matchup. <laughs> I think that's just one of the things you just have to understand how their, uh, the deck operates and maybe play the best of ability, which, um, it looked like they were able to do, you know, that turn one board was really, um, flexible to be able to deal with specifically Makanko, keeping the plump up. The fact that it couldn't target, takes up the uh, the equip spells from the graveyard from the Makanko deck. Really, really useful. So um, let's see how it pans out here. What do we got? Well, notably, there are some cards in the um, uh, the Pearly side deck that kind of deal with Makanko. You know, they're not perfect, um, but they're better than nothing. And uh, game one, you have a lot of dead cards. Um, not too much of an issue for Pearly, just because uh, Pearly can always pitch a dead card. But um, always good to get uh, some of those cards out for more targeted things, like the first card here in the side deck that I'm not going to name. Um, for the Makanko player, uh, you know, uh, pretty expected what they're going to board into. A lot of the cards you've come to expect Is against it? Pearly, a lot of the cards you've come to expect from Makanko. Mm -hmm. If you're, um, ever in the Pearly position, or mm -hmm. you're ever, like, if you're ever the Pearly player, are you ever in any case doing the switch up where you let your opponent go first and hope it works out in your favor there? Or are you just always yamming going first because it is like the go-to play? I think again in TCG, you probably don't let them go first just because like, ugh, then you have to worry about that stupid um, Ken and Gen combo play. Uh, but in Master Duel where those cards don't exist, I would consider it for sure. Pearly has a really easy time going second. Makanko's going first boards aren't particularly powerful. So there's this strange dance where the Makanko player has a lot of cards that are good going first. And should they win game two and game three, 
they're going to have to kind of intuit if their opponent thinks it is worth making them go first or if they want to put them on the draw. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, we'll let the players side up here, see what comes out of it. Yeah, um, looks like our Makonko Duelist is done. Not surprising. It's uh, pretty straightforward, um, but our Pearly Duelist taking a little bit more time. I mean, I want to make sure that a, a rogue matchup like this, you don't leave in any cards that do absolutely nothing. I know I've certainly boarded poorly a number of times against decks I'm not super familiar with. Uh, they've both jumped mm -hmm. in. We are just waiting for them to get through the coin flip. And uh, let me see if I can check if they've said if they want to go first or second. Uh, for game two, the Makonko player has actually said they are going to go first. They opted to go first. Okay. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Me see if too. it pays off. Well, um, they are in now. Let's just jump in and see what it looks like. Um. Okay. Surely that's not it. That, I'm like, <laughs> come on. No! Come on! Can't be this. Well, you know, we did see a boarded game against Pearly that went a very particular way. We're gonna have to hope for the exact same result this time around, too. That face down better be insane. Followed up with a happy memory. It's T2. Okay, all right. I mean, frustrating, but it's one of the cards that you hope to draw into when going first. And now That's you're like stuck a, with a 100 attack monster on your see. side of the field. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah, we were just talking about the last time we saw this situation with our uh, with was Vanquish Soul player. I think Judeu. Uh, he had himself a dimensional barrier that gave him a full turn, but just couldn't find the outs to be able to uh, take the game and put it in his favor. So we'll see if uh, Bene has that benefit. This may give us more draw. than one full turn, I will say. <laughs> I, think, I do yeah, like chat might saying, give a couple. Like, summon Azalea. Simply summon Azalea. Uh-huh. And how will we be how? summoning Azalea? <laughs> well. Normal Valor. That's true. Do they play Anima? We know they are on the Ghost Trick variant. So, unlikely. All right, is that set card a uh, an imperm, perhaps? <laughs> I, I feel like that's one of the only outs for it there. Oh, is that the other deep? <laughs> he said, I don't know. I'm just never going to play a card. You're going to get in 100 at a time. All right, set pass. Normal, a main deck ghost trick. Nice try. Ghost trick fairy is a fairy. <laughs> Negative one, you can't be activating that card. That's going to put you at a much faster clock than your opponent. Yeah. <laughs> no! Wait. That doesn't make Azalea. Oh, does not it does make the, something. Uh... It makes Durandal! Doolahan! That's what I said. Say Fiend. And then 
Zeus is a machine. We could make it happen. All right, we're cooking. I like it. it you know, we might be microwaving a little bit, but it it could it could work. Surely there's no other macro that deal with this piece of door. Should immediately throw in mischief. Mm -hmm. I want one more material. What is mischief? Is she a fairy? Oh, okay. she is. I mean, probably fine, right? This is going to be a big Zeusy. Yeah. I wonder if you do it now, if you wait a turn. If you think you can make Noir, you probably do it now. This is cute. You get to go CL2 Zeus, which means at point of resolution, you'll be CL1. Appeal with that ceremony. other back really is. All right, well, Hurley's doing pretty good now. We got a Zeus with an activation. Going to end up with another XYZ on the board here by the end of the turn. Pitching Bell. Okay. Yeah. Hands got him gassed that, um, up then. You would expect to see out of the board. From here, we're just going to go get a Perlily. We can go get... Or uh, even a Pearly, depending on uh, what we want to actually accomplish with our hand. Yeah. Harold. Shot. Sleepy memory. Almost really bad. Almost very bad. All right, we're going to go for the pearly effect, reveal delicious memory. That's known. And we're just going to end on the slurper, I imagine. Hey, it worked pretty well last time. I mean, great Makanko ceremony, a great card to slurp up. I wonder what the play is here. Set one? Yeah, set two. All right, good luck. All right, I'm, I'm feeling less... Less optimistic about this uh, Makanko after starting to go first. Yeah, I'm feeling less optimistic about being able to manage this board after such a, like a, a low-impact open there. We have to have some idea. So, but by electing to go first, it's unlikely we boarded into a lot of the cards that we have that equalize these board states, uh, which is really bad news. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. That is not looking, that's not at all what you want to see. And the scoop comes down. No. That is tough. That's wow, uh... Makonko. The going first side deck plan didn't pan out. Oh, what are, you no. are you just really hoping that Tikaboo brings you to that victory there? Like that's like the only real thing, right? Yeah, it's 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 actually a really strange decision to go first because, I mean, for a deck like um, Judeu Yu-Gi-Oh's uh, Vanquish Soul, they had cards like Dimensional Barrier, which just read past the turn, right? But Tikaboo was the only real reason for this deck to go first, and it found it, and it was okay. It's like, all right, it stopped him for a turn, but you still need to find a lot of your engine, and they didn't. Um, yeah, that's that's real strange. Uh, with Kaijus in the board, I would have expected they just said, go for it, and hoped for the best. Hello, everybody! It's your boy Joseph Rothschild, a.k.a. MBT, and we are back with the top four of the third week of the Master Circuit Series. We were literally, literally just a 30-second a break. I am very pleased to be here once again with Nim Nim. How are you doing, Gage? Fantastic. There's people lighting firecrackers outside of my house. Interesting time of year to be doing that, but I They're so I guess excited they're for our top four matchup. They said, oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to see the top four matchups here. We actually just went over the, the players and the decks and uh, lots of cool competition coming in uh, for the top four of week three of MCS here, season two. Yep, so, we've got. Uh, really um, excited to get watching. We've got P shift and negative one in one match. That is a pearly mirror, which we will not be watching. 
Uh, and the other no, matchup that's my favorite. is going to be I Wish I Was Dead uh, versus Quantal Think. Uh, two titans of exactly the uh, circuit series. Um, showing off some really interesting deck lists. Um, we've watched Quantal pilot Dragon Link for the last uh, couple of games. Uh, but we've also watched I Wish I Was Dead pilot Adagnister. Really cool deck. Uh, playing a lot of the new cyber cards, including Firewall Dragon Singularity. As, as they say in the business... Firewalls bigger than ever. <laughs> yeah, we've seen uh, Qua uh, we've seen. Sorry, um, I wish I was dead. Kind of get stymied for a lot of his combos. Haven't really seen end on the arrival, but every single time we've seen him shape the board into something that allows him to take the victory. So hoping to see some more of that gameplay from him today. It's been really tight, really crisp. Um, just excited to get into it. Yeah, who's your money um, on between these two titans, dude? <laughs> oh, I hate to do this. We've watched. I wish I was dead. I think four or five times today and we have only seen him lose <laughs> i think we watched one game that he won that was game two of the last one um but other than that pretty much everything we've seen as soon as we come in something terrible happens to him be it losing the maxi mini game getting droll fired on him uh i think quantal is going to take it i think dragon link is an incredibly powerful deck quantal is a world's quality pilot uh, I think I Wish I Was Dead's goose is cooked, but I would like to be proven wrong. I Wish I Was Dead has talked a lot about how this deck is the unique choice into a format that includes things like Maxi because it can theoretically deck out through it and play through the amount of hand traps that you will draw over the course of the turn. And Quantal's deck is not on a ton of hand traps. I mean, it is playing uh, the Bestials, which is annoying for a deck that also has uh light monsters but um depending on when in the turn he draws them they might not matter at all yeah i have a lot of faith and i wish i was dead you know helping me out with progression series on a week by week basis i've seen the the intelligence that this guy exudes and I, i'm really excited to see him hopefully conquer quantum in top four i'm gonna put i'm gonna be the antagonist i'm gonna put my money on uh, i wish i was dead for this one. Ooh, you know what why don't we why don't we do a prediction why doesn't chat do? Um, oh yeah, there we go. Let's get All right, chat. chat you've got thirty seconds to see where on they're, this. They're head at. I wish I was dead or Quantal. Uh, if you're wondering why we're stalling, um, I wish I was dead is just uh, unsighting from his last match. Uh, didn't do the thing where you create a whole bunch of lists for like swapping back and forth. Uh, I wish there was a more elegant way to side in Master Duel, but there just isn't. <laughs> I'm so confident in my choice. I'm going to put all of my points, literally all 52,000 points I have in your chat, into I Wish I Was Dead. Okay. <laughs> no, that's well, a good idea. But what are they... What are they used for anyways, dude? Like, <laughs> That's fair. What am I going to do? Highlight my message in your chat? You better be highlighting your message. I, you would better <laughs> be redeeming Call Judge. Um, you better be redeeming, <laughs> redeeming Contribute to Cult's Totem. Has anyone done that today? Oh, I don't Wait, know how to turn redemption? that off, by oh. the way. <laughs> All right. What is the bro? What is the Quimby voting? I see that, and I I don't know what that is. And well, you're never no you're never gonna like, know, and because uh, you've wasted all your money on I wish I was dead, who is now playing, so we can jump in. Well, just wait, man. When I win this bet, I'll have two hundred thousand piss gang rede redeems. So I'll be they're actually large. called MB tickets. <laughs> All right, getting into there. Both players using the default, too. Look at oh, that. Oh, and I wish I was dead has won the die roll. This is a really impressive start. Uh, normal summon a Chi-Chi is as good as it gets for this deck. Dark Infant at Ignister. We're going to go ahead and grab the field spell. There it is, the Ignister Island. We'll go ahead and activate that. And then afterwards, we're going to activate the effect to summon that uh, Picari from hand. And we have caught up to live. Picari's going to add, I imagine, I, I miss you, I kiss you, I love you, I ship you. I meet you. That's what it's called. Not all the same. From here, we can go into Splash Mage. We can fire I Miss You. We, there's so much um, that this deck can do. Uh, so many people, I think, tunneled onto the Adagnisters as this, like, really effective series of tools that can make um, the Rival Cybers Adagnister, right? And they are really good at that. Uh, but they're also a really, really competent, like, Cybers Link Spam strategy. We've seen I Wish I Was Dead end on Firewall Singularity, Firewall Access Code, um, Neo Tempest Terahertz, like, all the really crazy stuff that you can theoretically summon, provided you've got infinite Link Arrows. 
and um, using a lot of the new Cybers tools given to him in this most recent pack, uh, Defensor, Phantom, uh, the, the new guys. Uh, it, it's all really impressive um, how someone who has spent a lot of time thinking about these cards, not just in the context of a deck like Math Mech, can really make a deck that incorporates all of uh, the typing's strengths. Yeah, even a little bit of a blast from the past if we're not looking at new cards. Firewall Dragon, even post Arata, has been putting in a lot of work in I Wish I Was Dead. Uh, really instrumental and in actually coming out with a few wins. From it's the two compulses, it's extension. If you reborn it, it turns back on. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think we can un of the card. I think it's fine. Uh, mm, uh, I will... I'll disagree with you there, buddy. <laughs> Alright. Still no... Not even a prompt from Quantal, right? It's mm. just been I wish I was dead solitaring away. Uh, Quantal has been to Worlds. I think he knows how to turn Toggle off. All right, we're going for Dark Templar at Ignister. Um, we're going to activate the effect of Island to summon a guy. I think Doyon is the pick here, if I recall correctly. Oh, no, we're going Baruru. Baruru, -ru -ru -ru. This allows us to send an at Ignister from the deck to the graveyard. Uh, we're going to go for Gachidi, and then afterwards we can make a Dark Infant at Ignister, move it over, and it's Templar time, baby. One thing that's always really funny about this deck is when going second, its combo potential is incredibly limited relative to going first uh, because it has to be in this zone to get all three summons for the Dark Templar at Ignister. Putting it in this zone makes uh, Dark Infant go the wrong way. So having full control of the, uh, of the board is extremely important here. I think we're going to actually be able to see the arrival come down, so it could be exciting. Adagnister, Doyon, Picari. All right, what do we do from here? Two of these to the grave. We're going to make the win Pegasus. Great way to get back in the game if your board gets removed. Baruru to Win Pegasus is actually... Win Pegasus is actually a sick card, too. People just end up using that with a card like Dogmatica Maximus or something like that. Yep. It's just a good target to send, right? Um, uh, as you know, some of the Rescue Ace decks now make a Neo Tempest Terahertz, and, um, I've been talking with a lot of people about playing Wind Pegasus at Ignister over something like Neurologic Aggregator, just because, like, any scenario where you get to the second activation, you really just need follow-up. Mm -hmm. Oh god, we haven't even done Circular yet. <coughs> Pick up off of Alimbertion, thank you very much. All right. Three, four, five. And here he is. Dark Fluid. Whoa! All right. Uh, Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid is going to uh, sit outside the EMZ, which is important for uh, circular reasons. And uh, what do you know? This also plays around a Biru because now when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can negate that activation. <laughs> All right, we're going to go for a circular here off the Sigma Summon. All right, we'll keep him moving. Circular, pick up the Super Factorial. Uh, no, we're just getting Equation here. <laughs> said, what is a oh. trap card? I'm not, it's not, I ain't worried about it, buddy. G Golem Crystal Heart coming down now. Um, can target an Earth Link monster, summon it to a zone this card points to. Uh, let's go grab Transcode. They got the Trans Ratch Talker, the Firewall Dragon Gender Fluid. What's going on here? And here he is, the the OG himself. Firewall, like I said, instrumental to be able to crack boards, get plays back in the hand. A co-linked de decoder here. <laughs> Going firewall dragon. For those of you who are afraid that now firewall dragon is offline, um, you will be seeing him again. Don't don't worry. Right, we're going to put the Gachidi in our hand. Uh, this card makes what it is used for uh, unable to be affected by cards. So it's a really great way to ensure that you don't get owned uh, the first action of your opponent's main phase. And uh, there he is. 
Firewall Dragon is bigger than ever. Singularity into Reborn Singular. Link Decoder here. Gachidi is going to prevent the Singularity from being affected by opponent's card effects for an entire turn cycle. We have seen three firewalls this turn. Will we see a fourth firewall? How many firewalls are there? There's one more firewall? I mean, unless you consider the XYZs then, right? There's like a firewall to exceed dragon and stuff, but nobody plays those. We're gonna go Alan Bershon here, summon back a math mech. Here's the circular. Uh, because uh, it left the field, we now can target a side person special it. <laughs> he's Jesus. back, baby. If you're unfamiliar with Singularity, he's Firewall Dragon, but for Grave. <laughs> and now, guess who we put back in the extra? It is... Oh no, we're not done! Wait, there's more! <laughs> oh my god! The Splash Mage. Royal Splash, Splash Mage. Mage, too? The Royal Three one. Three cards in the extra, on. by the way. Are we going through all 15? What is going on here? Into this is like room. the ultimate end board. I'm curious <laughs> to see what so this crazy. actually just like sticks on. I chat saying U Link. There's no reason to do a U Link. Singularity points up. Are we just making Heat Soul? <laughs> All right, there is what? One, two cards. And we know one is G Golem Crystal Heart. <laughs> oh, we're just, just going to keep going. We'll pitch we're the not extra done. We're not done. island. Oh, in we're hand. grabbing Picari. That's, that's not. <laughs> Draw a card here? Yeah! <laughs> okay, so I think, yeah, I think we do know the last two cards are G Golem, Crystal Heart, and Access Code Talker. <laughs> All right. All right. Says, go ahead, Quantal. Let go. me see what you got. <laughs> Defeat my firewall army. 37 minutes. No joke. So, for, for those of you who are counting along at home, this means yes. I wish I was dead. Is not playing the arrival cyber static history. We've been baited the entire time. And the maxi <laughs> off the top too. You know, yeah, just to rub it in, salt in the wound. <laughs> Have fun. I mean he drew like nine cards. <laughs> <laughs> mm. See, but if I'm Quantal, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I could play it out. So you got to beat Firewall Dragon Gender Fluid. You have to beat Firewall Dragon and Firewall Dragon Singularity, uh, which has how many bounces? I think two. Two. You I have an Xyz and a bounces. Synchro. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we are going to go ahead and activate Dark Fluid here. Now, important fact about Dark Fluid, that is not a once per turn. So it's two monster negates on Dark Fluid, uh, the two bounces on Firewall, and the one AoE bounce off Singularity. <coughs> I mean, pretty powerful board. Commanding. Now, one thing that might <clears throat> screw up, I wish I was dead. I wonder if you just bounce this. You just go fuck it. <laughs> like, yeah, just Firewall say, like, Dragon. Yeah, what else are you going to do, right? <clears throat> bounce Saferd Lubellion. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's like, uh, forget it. Um, One thing that might screw up uh, I Wish I Was Dead is, as we saw in one of the... Uh, his his go round, he actually has kind of a hard time outing Boralod. Or uh, Boralend, rather. So I imagine maybe in game two we'll be dealing with it. Was that Firewall Dragon targeting Safer Gachidi? Yeah, allowing the Biscuit yeah. Rebellion to chill. <clears throat> Rumble Summon out the way. Chaos Space, great card. Show me the Ash Blossom as well, please. No. I mean, there's just no way. Oh! <laughs> Sometimes you just, you just want it more. It I don't know what to say. Yeah, that's um, that, that, that's it. You just sometimes you just want it more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, still three unknowns. Like a um a hard opened chaos dragon could maybe do something here. Oh. 
Um. Okay. I mean, do you give a shit about that? I think that's probably fine. No, I think you're you're literally okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't turn on chaos space. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. This tells me that he doesn't have a chaos dragon in hand either. Specifically, yeah, you, you he has that black one. Right? You get to not fear bestials. Quick launch. Good yeah. card. Very good card. Wow, I, for what it's worth, despite the fact that it had no hand traps, Quantal's hand is real good. Yeah. It's like all gas. <clears throat> what do you think? You just put this back in the hand? Or you give no, him a chance to pop anything else? Get a little far. I mean, he's already normal summoned and everything. Like. Mm -hmm. Pisty here. Oh, okay. Now you probably do have to get rid of this. <clears throat> mm, do you? Still a yeah, fine position. Has an yeah. yeah, you do, yeah. Still a fine position, though, right? You're still in the same spot. You get rid of this. He's gone through his normal summon. He's pretty much telegraphed. He doesn't have any of the baby Chaos Dragons in hand. Uh, he's already used that Lubellion, so he can't put it back in the bin. So you know there's one dead card in his hand. There's two that potentially could do something but they gotta be like they gotta be great yeah. we just let this go oh and he's going for the dark fluid anyways. activation here so we we are retaining the uh firewall dragon singularity we hard opened boot sector launch well that can get back the rocket tracer it's kind of actually big actually that card's really good mm, wow that's uh kind of weird um if you go for the graveyard effect of the boot sector launch you can actually bounce the boot sector launch with the firewall dragon singularity yep and then you only have one unknown that's crazy that we are one unknown away from actually cracking this board though or not cracking this board but being allowed to play isn't the um the singularity protected by got you cheery right yeah yeah <clears throat> it's like it's not the end of the world we're just going to put back the boot secti launch. Last there. card, Kurikara, one time. <laughs> this okay. last card literally got to be insane. Okay, that was about the best possible hand that I Wish I Was Dead's deck can produce, so I, I don't know how, yeah, no. <laughs> how pissed off you can be about yeah, it. After watching him lose a whole bunch of games because we were watching them on stream, that's the first time we I think we got to see his combo in full action. Mm -hmm. Kind of crazy, right? Kind of nuts. <laughs> Firewall see where the 37 is bigger than ever. <laughs> Ugh. Yep, that was awesome, actually. Good to watch. So we're going into a game, what? Game, game two? Is that game one? Or that that game, was game one. Game yeah. two, yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll send you their, um, their side decks real quick. Uh, this is I Wish I Was Dead's, and this is Quantal Thinks. So weird part about this one is that um, obviously you probably don't have a lot of stuff that's good against I Wish I Was Dead's resolved board. But if you're going first, there's a lot that you are boarding into. Um, sure. The uh, second and third to last cards in this, of course, are very powerful when going first. Um, and if you are... Uh, I wish I was dead and you expect to be going second. You've got some tools as well, though I don't know how well your deck plays going second. It feels a lot like Math Mech and that you are just trying to get to a big-ass access code. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as you can stave them off of getting even close to there, like, what's the deck going to do? It just kind of crumbles. So and we do have some outs to Boral and importantly in the uh, in that side deck as well. So it may not be as backbreaking as it was in the game that we watched on stream. Yeah, that was the best of ones. Maybe you just don't have the out prepared for the the best of ones in particular. But this is where the side deck can come in, right? Giving us those outs to those cards that we didn't have before. Uh, notably, this pearly uh, mirror is still in game one. I imagine we will be watching that for like the next 45 uh years no doubt no doubt what do you think um what do you think is the most enjoyable ride at ai land Hmm. because it's a it's a it's an amusement park isn't it it is an amusement park do you think how does like... that fit into the archetype i don't get it I mean, what what the heck are the it's a are it's the a ai since they're like it's a paradise only for AIs, the ultimate life form. Did you even watch Brains? God, no. no I, I, I don't you would even not be I welcomed the into the appliance or electrolytical world. I'll tell you that right now. 
Oh no, King Scarlet's gonna let me hear it. <laughs> No, you. The third season of uh, of Reigns is is quite bad. It's really not good. Uh, and a lot of it is is the the I storyline, which mostly makes no sense. I don't know, man. Did people like Arc V with the uh, the Performa pals? Oh. I think I watched like the first episode and I was already sick of it. I was mm -hmm. like, I just don't like the vibe of it. Too cheery for me. Does that imply that the previous two are any good? Uh, I think the second season of Reigns is good, but I am outspoken on this fact. Um, everyone else thinks it's bad because it's boring and slow. And to them I say, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh anime. Everybody praises the fact that they do like real combos and stuff like that. I, I hate that. If the, show, if the rest of the show isn't good, I don't care. Like, yeah. Oh know? my god. Like, they activated Multifaker? That's just like in my games. I like that they remade the anime to be about Rush because they ain't doing shit in Rush. They are normal summoning. I hope Rush gets a little bit more support in Duel Links, man. Kind of like that's so get poopy it. that they haven't done anything about it. Yeah. Just watch it on 2X, monstrous. I knew a guy who watched Brains on 7X. And I remember being like, how could you possibly be enjoying it? And they were like, well, Wait, I'm, I'm just trying to get the whole episode into it. in five minutes? Yeah, they, they would I'm like, after an episode came out, they would come in five minutes later and be like, I like this and this and this. And I'd be like, how do you know that already? And they're like, oh, I already watched it on X7. That's crazy. That's, that's. Ooh, that's, speaking that of X7. Behavior. Here's a Yikes. cool card. Oh, no, wait. Okay, we flipped the board perspective. I was a little confused there for a second. I wish I was dead comes down with a drool and Lockbird there. Pretty powerful. We're going to make a Striker Dragon pass here. Okay, we, we got a Bestial. Oh, unfortunately, Magnemuk can't even get its search either, right? It can activate it can its activate, effect, yeah. but... We'll get one from the grave at end yeah. step. Unless we get something else from the bin, we can pick up that Lubellion, I guess, right? Seals but... pass. See, how do we beat Seals pass? It seems too strong. Oh, Lubellion's pretty good here. It sets. That's like a thing we could do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we can add Lubellion back to our hand. Be worse. This could that we could be in a far worse position here. So you can expect. Oh, just that's like, gonna drop the five. Probably there's like a Lubellion or a uh, Druid Swarm in hand or something. Otherwise, we would have gotten Beast. I don't know. It's um, it's a thinker. Well, that's a Chi-Chi. Regain here, target Magnemut. Sure. I think you're completely fine with this. Yeah, I'm curious to see if uh, I Wish I Was Dead can simply beat Seal's Pass here. Well, it depends on what else is in rotation. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to do it now. <clears throat> so this is an interesting decision. Um... Usually you need to normal summon a monster. Jesus Christ, that's as bad as it gets. That's tough. Yeah, that is a... Uh... Is there a Lubellion in Eesh. hand? Let's find out. No, no uh, dice. Okay. So, yeah, no, usually um, Adagnister needs a monster to remain on field to make Dark Infant. And if you just bounce it, maybe they didn't draw the Ignister Island, which they play a couple copies of could get out of it 
But uh, here, that obviously didn't happen. Decent draw! Here Ooh, three. decent rip! That'll, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Nice called by the grave. Used it at the wrong time. <laughs> okay, all right. We're still playing Yu-Gi-Oh here. Now, I wish I was dead thinking here. There is a line. <laughs> he did talk about 37 summons. However, I don't, I don't are know, we though, man. really go up against like a deck full of bestials, a deck full of, like, there, there's got to be some Ash Blossoms in there. Yeah. Here we go. Now, we know that that uh, Quantal has an Nibiru, but he has to draw the Nibiru and activate it at a time that it's going to do something. <coughs> and he has to do it before Dark Fluid makes it onto the field. Yeah. yeah. As soon as Dark Fluid gets those tokens, it might as well be GG. There's the AI Reborn. I think we're going for it. Let's break a little toss here real quick. This is four. I think this next summon here comes to five, so... So the, the interesting part here is we don't necessarily have to go all the way in terms of a combo. If we can just get to circular, we can make a... Oh, we have to go pretty far, actually, because we don't have access to uh, Update Jammer, right? Yeah, I think it's just an all-or-nothing type of line here. Like, you kind of just have to put all your, your eggs into one basket, hope it works out in your favor. 28 cards in deck. I mean, there's just no way. But when you think that 15 of those are cards in the extra, and 15 of them are cards that get to a card in the extra. Mm -hmm. It could happen. Splash Mage coming down. <clears throat> There's no shot he gets decked out. He uh, just has to droll himself. Do you feel confident Quantal is playing droll? That's the question. I think I wish I was dead is asking himself right now. <clears throat> oh. Oh. He's got something. Uh. He's got something. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I think you're in too deep. I still think you just gotta keep going. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta... Oh, there's the rock. We're just firing it off. So it's, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. Just rock time. <clears throat> okay, so notably, uh, we can extend through this, but Quantal does have other hand traps. Yeah, we haven't seen Ash Blossom activate once yet. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, full thrust. Mm. What do we get here? Card destruction one time? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> then we have to go get a uh, circular. <clears throat> Pitching a Chi-Chi. Oh, do we have Ash, too? No, we would Ash, would Ash the Thrust. Like Okay, I mean, we're going to try for Sigma, but I imagine that's just going to get a bestial. Yep. Oh, it's Baldrake, too. That's disastrous. That's a tough one, yeah. Yeah, that might be the end of the game. Did not realize Baldrick was going to make an appearance. This is also an extra. Well, I mean, they, they they do be playing Bistial Baldrick. That's a, a very real Bistial card. Yep. Oh, man, we were close. My God. Oh, wait. We're not done, actually. The remaining card in hand I think we know is Picari. <coughs> Decoder. Man, this is this is really tense. I there's no way I'm we make it to deck out lines. from this position. It's just a question yeah, of yeah, no, if we're, we can put up something. Super short. But I mean, okay, put up something. One thing against a hand of like fifteen plus cards. I mean, I don't know about you, Joseph, but <laughs> I don't have a lot of hope that I'm winning that game. Mm. Quantal opened up so much interaction. That's true. It's he has it looks like he's found like half his deck at this point. <laughs> they are bald raking the link decoder. That is very interesting. <sighs> Last card equation. Target circular. And Druus or meet the circular. All right, okay, that's yep. That's okay, got to be it. <clears throat> hmm. Well, we tried. <laughs> we tried through the bug. The roach, huh? Dark infant. Yeah. Does that do anything? Oh, is that an unaffected dark infant? Hey. Oh, yo. unaffected primal being token. Hold up. <laughs> Wait. No. Oh. We we gotta figure out a way to get that off the board. In phase we're gonna magnum up, we can pick up another bestial at the deck or one in the graveyard that we have. I mean, we have a, a still are dead for sure. You just seals it next turn? If you're playing two seals... Wait. <laughs> we put back seals with uh, regained. We're fine. Nib token carries? Yeah. You want to do the uh, very end of this one? I gotta grab something real quick. Yeah, I got you, bud. Don't worry. Alright, so with our 20 card grip... I, chat. Quantal can't lose this game. <laughs> like, surely... We can do uh, just about an amount of anything. We can put uh, our board into seals, bounce off the token next turn. We don't even have to make a game push this turn. I wish I was dead as drawing up the one card, which I mean, I I'm sure there's that Quantal probably has like another hand trap or something chilled by. That's just what happens in these things, right? Like the, the maxi challenge, you take it, and 90% of the time, I'd say it doesn't go in your favor. 
ten percent of the time you do do something crazy and it works out, like you feel like you're the greatest the game's ever seen, but it's very infrequent that something like that actually happens. You can make a 7300 access code talker. I need you to look at Quantle's life points right now. I'm um, I'm doing the math, uh, and the math ain't mathin'. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's how I wish I was dead can still win. Very insightful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Quantal has a heart attack. Quantal has a gamer moment. Quantal has to go babysit Farfa's kid. You know, that's... That's three more options than I thought of. Yeah. So I'll give it to you. Those are, those are all, I'd say, equally plausible. I'm, I'm playing on my outs here. <laughs> oh, what the hell? This is Borland. Oh, okay. Just raw Borland. Our good like friend this. Borland. <clears throat> Look at this hand. I kind of want to just see him pass here and dump, like, 19 cards into the grave. I think that would be funny. Imagine now trying to navigate code. that hand on a mobile device now. Hmm? Imagine you're on your cell phone, and you're trying to play this match, and you have to navigate those 20 cards in hand. How do you do that? Imagine, for instance, you're at a barbecue, and your name is Mount Fuji. <laughs> Your phone would be at least, like, 500 degrees, right? Oh, yeah. Imagine you're at a you wedding. You know, if... <laughs> you're trying to clean it up before your vows. Well, we don't really have a good way to out the token yet, but we're getting there. You don't need one this turn, too, right? It, uh, by the next turn, it's affected by everything, isn't it? Correct. <clears throat> Whoa. He just milled five in a 14 card deck. We're getting there, chat. This is a real pain moment, right? How yeah. will you defeat the second one? Big Rock comes down. I don't watch Naruto. I watch One Piece. Me? I've thought about it for a, yeah. a little bit. It's just so much. I, I've heard really good things about the, the live action movie. Really? And I think that's like the only digestible form I can watch it. I don't think I could sit down for that one. I watched a little what bit of Netflix one, and I thought it was not very good, personally. Oh, really? I okay, like, oh, I heard the exact is, opposite. This I heard is it corny. Great. This is like a, an, it looks like a Disney Channel movie. Oh, that is a 73 access code talker. Okay. And can the token be destroyed by battle? Probably, right? It's just unaffected by card effects. That's correct. Gage going to take media advice from the guy that hates Avatar. That's true. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? That's fair. <laughs> I'm sure you will love children's show One Piece. It, it will cleanse your palate after children's show Avatar. Oh, somebody did bring up the fentanyl thing, by the way. I did look that up. I was baited. Oh, I, you got owned. I, you know what? I'm gullible, bro. Maybe I... I... <laughs> who would want to abduct wanna... me anyways? That's the real question. What? Who would actually want to take... <laughs> who would want to abduct me anyways? That's the real question. Oh, you don't know the weirdos in my chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
that's a really funny character. Like, upset abduction victim. Aw, oh, gee, no one would ever abduct me. <laughs> I never see any zip ties on the hood of my car. <laughs> you, like, turn on the news and it's like... And 26-year-old Gage was uh, abducted from his house this weekend. I'm like watching at home. I'm like, wow, congratulations. Finally. I knew it would happen for you, buddy. His, like, his last words were, nobody can do that. Fucking try me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Kill me? <laughs> oh, no, he, he ran a Chi-Chi. Shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this is unnecessary. Holding us hostage, Joseph. Yeah. Now we're just going combat. No! All right. And uh, we move into a game three situ... Oh, fuck off. <laughs> a game three situation. <laughs> Oh, really but giving a lot end, of information you know, here it. on the last, uh, the last attack. Whoa! I wish that. I was dead at home like, uh-huh, uh-huh, cross, uh -huh, cross out, noted, noted. Alright, we moving into game three here. Uh, game to see three, Portal I feel like it's gonna be determined by... The Roach! Who draws the Roach? I think I... <laughs> yes. I hope that, uh... I wish I was dead. Like I said, I have a whole bunch of points weighing on this win here. So I'm hoping he opens up full combo. No Roaches in, uh... Quantel's hand. Or, better yet, if there is the Roach in the hand, I'd like to see a call by the Grave. I'd like to see the ga uh, the Grave given a call to my man, Quantel. Ring-a-ding-ding. Ring-a-ding-ding. It's weird because you could argue that uh, I Wish I Was Dead could play through the um, the spheres and should have held the called by for the maxi. But the maxi was drawn off the draw from banishing the spheres from regained. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was a rough he scenario. You probably would have seen the maxi come down earlier in the turn. That's something you just really can't <laughs> account for, right? Yeah. Drawing the one, uh, the three of out the, the top there. How are the pearlies doing? And, and uh, you saw, he one game right in. Right. Okay, finish their game one. I like to hear it. P shift has won game one. Was that game two or three? That was game two. We are moving into game three. So Quantal, not Quantal, sorry. Um, I wish I was dead. We'll have the decision to be able to go first or second. Do you think he's going first or second? Oh, I think he's going to go for the mix up. I think he's going <laughs> to go second. <laughs> You're blind second. Uh, no, that, um, I don't think so. I think it's unlikely, personally. All right, Quantal is ready. And we are now one I wish I was dead away from seeing it. I'm ready, baby. I'm ready. I'm locked in. <clears throat> Keep in mind, chat, this is top four we're in. We'll be moving into the finals after this. Super excited. If you guys have been enjoying the coverage, feel free to follow MBT's channel, which house, houses all of the MCS coverage. Um, you can check out the VOD will be live for this on uh, your YouTube channel, or will it just be available on Twitch until the top 16 goes live on YouTube? Uh, it'll be on Twitch. I think that I am going to try and get the top 16 up tonight. I think I can probably do that. Okay. Um, but So if you guys missed any of the coverage from previous rounds, you guys can check that out on uh mbt's channel i'm pretty sure it gets housed on your main channel it so does you guys can and if you need a link to my main channel exclamation mark socials in the chat thank you for asking people to follow i never do that i'm always i'm always like oh yeah also follow and then like 15 people follow and i'm like i should have done that earlier you know what follow yeah. subscribe <laughs> give me money and let's all watch i wish i was dead open a brick for game three All right, baby. Let's get in there. Game three. Wow, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Pooping Snake One for following the channel just now. 
I really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, man, Ooh, bro. Normal and Chi Chi. Damn, how does he do it? That shit gas, bro. Oh, Quantal, I, he's a he's a high level player. He could be the toggle Andy we've been talking up. about. Did but... Quantal? Did did I wish I was dead? Change his background for this, or they have they both been playing on basic this entire time? And they've been both playing on basic, I think, the whole time. Hmm. So no Maxi, it looks like, but that doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet. We know that Quantal plays Nibiru. We know that he plays um, Bistials. No droll. We've checked all the boxes. I don't... Are we oh. just free to go, maybe? Oh, passed back to him for a sec there. Was that Nibiru? Doyon. Wicked. Targeting a Chi Chi. Chat has come up with another disturbing possibility. There are now light monsters in the graveyard. Oh no. It has to be it then, right? It has to be some kind of bestial. Some sort of Magnum Hut. Going transcode here. Doyon. Transcode targeting Wicked. That's a tasty bestial. I wonder if he takes it. I land for red. Transcode targeting the link to. This is the time. I feel like this oh, is what it's got That's very interesting. And now it's time for Neo Tempest Dark Fluid, right? Now we're just making Dark Templar out of Nister. Said, I don't think you had Nib up until then. I don't think you have it now. I land, go summon for a monster. All the marbles here. Target Doyon or something. Oh, Sen got Chitty, actually. Here we go. One of the most opportune times to Nibiru. Infant. Dark Templar 1, Infant 2. It's resolving. Ew. Oh, man. Calling Divine. One, two, three. Here we can use the Baruru and the Doyon to make win Pegasus. Oh! No! That's it. They held it. Just held on to it. Nibiru really? moment. Disastrous. It's so Jover. A fatty token on his side, though, but... Or is it Jover at all? What are we picking? Look! We're picking Look! Oh, oh nice bestial! Sarnier, Safert, Safert, Chaos Space. Ooh, we Honestly, took the bestial. Do we have extension hand, through though. this? There's no way. We drew circular. Drew circular? Yo, <laughs> so is the circular. Ah, uh, you played a good game, Quantal. But at the end of the day, you couldn't defeat circular. Nice bestial, buddy. <laughs> Summon back Sigma. Trigger circular. Grab equation. Or we hard drew equation. <laughs> That's what happened. G Golem Crystal Fart. Crystal Heart Effect. Summon Transcode Talker. What are we ending on here then? What does this make? I don't know. I'm I'm thinking. <coughs> 
If I'm Quantal, I know I'm just staring at that GG counter. I'm going, it, but it was BG. That's a big firewall. That's a chonky little boy there. He's chubby, bro. But what do we do from here? We're going to firewall. What are we returning? The Nibiru, yeah. Was a hard one. Gachiri here is an extra material. So we can go Gachiri, link off the Crystal Heart and the Gachiri for something, which triggers Firewall. But we have to have something in hand worth summoning for that. Yeah. For Ruru instead. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right, we knew this already. Because we didn't search off of Circular. Do we have a three we can go into? Our extra's looking pretty light. Crystal Heart Circular. You already saw Transcoder, yeah, so. It's the only one I oh, can we're... think of? Unless I didn't know this did it. Right? Yeah, we're just going to make Decoder here. Cool. Does that count? It counts. It counts, yeah. Baruru. <laughs> Heat soul here. Heat soul pass. Splash mage. Is, yeah, I was going to say, you don't, probably don't make Heat soul here because there's no connecting arrows for your firewall dragon. Though. Have we activated Picari yet? Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. So this can be Wind Pegasus if we want. Which we want, apparently. And now we can summon again off Firewall, is what I would say if this was a good game. <laughs> what? That is so funny. We can go Alan Burch in here. <laughs> That's we needed crazy. Xyz in the graveyard for gender fluid. What do you even search off this? You can't... Or, like, nothing, right? Already had uh, our equation. I guess we just pick up a, a dude, maybe, from the deck? Yeah, fine. <laughs> I'll take a dude. It's just an extra guy. <laughs> Addition target firewall. What are we doing? <laughs> this combo has surpassed me. Is he able to make, like, dark fluid or, um... The singularity off of the materials you've been putting on? Yeah, yes, yes, we are. We are very able to do that. Yep, all right. Firewall is bigger than ever. Okay, so now we can activate uh, Alan Birch and summon a guy and then summon Firewall back to the singularity zone. Yep. Chat, I don't know if we're supposed to bounce Nibiru. I'm going to be honest with you. So if we have an Ash in hand, this does beat the grip. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, is we have a way to deal with the normal summon, right? Just put it back to hand. But mm -hmm. the Chaos space is actually, like, really Disastrous. problematic to deal with. <laughs> yeah, so we, we need to find a way to deal we, with we that. We did which bounce the Heat to draw into Ash would be a way to do it, but... All right, that's the hand. Okay, we'll see if we can we can beat it here. What do we got? We got a bounce off of Firewall. We, we have two bounces. two bounces off of thing there. That's still pretty good. That's still very, very D good. Actually, actually, you know what? If the card that he drew didn't do anything, this does beat the board, right? It does, you chaos yeah. space for a, a Chaos Dragon, and then you just Singularity it back, and then you Firewall the normal summon.
trying to think what would go crazy here. Like a quick launch would be maybe really good. Quick launch would be really spot. good. It would be insanely strong. It was Magnum. Two cards Girl. tucked away, though. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I guess you're okay with that. That card actually doesn't do anything to the board, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't really trade well into anything here. You bounce the safer, Before and then you the bounce phase, the Chaos bounce Dragon? Mm Chat saying it uh, threatens Firewall Dragon. I have terrible news. Yeah, you gotta read the big guy there. Singularity can summon back the monster that's destroyed. Yay. <laughs> we know the hand. It's it's safer, safer, chaos space nib. They're safer. I mean, just a 0% chance this sticks. And then here you singularity both of those back. Probably right. Yeah. I think this does it. Yeah, you singularity both these back. Even if you chaos space, summon the, the little dragon, you can you can even just bounce that back if you want. Yeah. No, you do firewall. for sure. You you're definitely supposed to. Yeah. Yeah, and then mm. that shuts down the entire turn. Is there a better Get a search during chaos the end space? Phase, you but... can do like Lubellion. Mm, Lubellion no, get I don't think that's a... worm. But ugh, fucking Firewall can target cards in the graveyard too. So when you go to banish something, yeah. you can just target it. Yep. Wow. This is like the middest board ever, and I think it's about to walk with it. Uh, hey, it played through Nibiru and stuff too. I, it, I'm yeah, actually genuinely This impressed. is through Nibiru. Like... This is through Nibiru Bistial. And we did draw triple tech, which was nice. <clears throat> Chat asking how they play through Bistials. It's actually super easy. If they summon a Bistial, you can, like... Oh, here we go. Never mind. <laughs> Chaos Space. Here's where they reveal they have Ash, too. Incredible. Sometimes you just want it more. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes you just want it more. Yeah, so, <laughs> Some... yeah even, even despite that, he already had the way to deal with it. That's crazy. Quantal is probably wishing he was dead right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that's everything. No. That's all interaction. Yeah, that's everything. We know the hand is safer game. Nibiru uh, Magnamut. Yeah, we're picking up another <laughs> Bistial at the end phase, but nothing that contests the current board. Yeah. So you you do play it out that's because it. there there is a chance that I wish I was dead screws this up. Mm -hmm. Always a chance. Uh, but it's a little hard to do with the um the Firewall Dragon and the Singularity both live at the same time. So you probably let this Druusworm resolve, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Because if you bounce the target, you have to engineer a scenario where the firewall goes to grave to trigger singularity, and then that leaves it kind of a sitting duck for the Magnamut. Like a Quantalus, Quantalus playing to his outs for what it's worth. He's doing a great job doing so. <clears throat> so I wish his dead says whatever. This some Druusworm. Oh, we are going to do it now. Early Bounce got don't, cheaty. I don't oh, know that's matter. funny. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. 
So this is um this is kind of a weird position to be in. Um the firewall's reborn effect is live, but I don't think we have the extra deck to facilitate it. I think we know what's in the extra, right? Let me just scroll through the grave real quick. Yeah, so the extra is access code, firewall dragon dark Templar. fluid. No Templar was already summoned. And one more. I'm trying to remember. Uh, have we been through both infants? I think we went through one infant so far, actually. Then it's infant in there. It's fucking Heat Soul. <laughs> the last card is Heat Soul. Oh, that's right. You're you're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now, <laughs> now we can get into a a really frustrating position for our Quantal. Uh, if we normally a Chi Chi and go grab the Reborn, I assume we still have a Reborn in rotation. Or um, sorry, if we normally a Chi Chi and go grab a monster. We can go Firewall, Circular, Achichi into Heat Soul, which procs Singularity, targeting the Firewall. And you have to eat the Firewall because otherwise the extension gets you to access code. Um, ooh, it's so... it's This is such a hard board to navigate. If you're... I wish I was dead. The only yeah, thing you're scared about is the Nibiru. You're like, right, there is still a Nibiru in rotation. Yeah, just gotta remember that's <laughs> in hand there. You could definitely mess something up if you put too many dudes on board here, but... I think if you just play this carefully, there's a 0% chance that you lose this game. Yeah. I was just thinking it out here, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, the rest of the hand is Safer, Nib, and Magnemut. That's uh, the last three cards we know in Quantal's hand there. I think the two in I Wish I Was Dead hand are... You picked something off of... No, are they unknown? I think they're unknown. <laughs> well, now they're known. <clears throat> Do we have an extender, even? Well, we will now. <laughs> No, I mean, like, still in deck. I think we have a subtraction. Subtraction. Yeah, I think subtraction's in there still. Let me check. Yeah, he's got a least subtraction. He's going to go for Hiyari here. That's a good card. This is one, two summons, three summons. Yeah, this will be three. And then if he goes into access code, I mean, that's just four. Uh, I don't even know if we're making access code. Yeah, we there's probably something better Neo to make here. Tempest, or, uh, we could go Dark Fluid, and it would also be very good. We go, like, Dark Fluid here, target the uh, Firewall Dragon with Singularity's effect, uh, negate the effect of the Magnemon in hand. Does Dark Fluid's effect to gain counters activate, or does it just have them? Yeah, we're doing it. I actually don't know. It does activate. <clears throat> So we go Dark Fluid here. That's the fourth. We've got to stop summoning this turn, so. <laughs> Kachiri, target the Singularity. We actually don't have to stop summoning here because at point of resolution, while well, we'll be at five, oh, uh, Dark Fluid's going to have counters yeah. on it. Yeah, we're so, insulated from... Uh, yeah, we have to go Magnemut here. here, targeting the, uh, the Nibiru. Firewall or the, uh, the Firewall Dragon. And then when we do that... We let it resolve. Singularity, the two monsters on field. They have one activation of Druus Worm. Dark Fluid can test that in battle. Yep. Yeah, because it'll have two negates. God. It's crazy that there is Ow. still a line for Quantal. He's playing this super well. Yeah. I mean, both players are playing it really well, right? Yeah. I wish I was dead tight. <laughs> really remembering everything in the grip from Quantal there. Just needed to play around it. Quantal says, yeah, you can have the Magnemut activation. You got it. Uh, I wonder if we do main phase singularity. I think it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever. Main phase singularity, bounce these two. Combat. I can't believe it gains the attack. That's so funny. 8k on the dark fluid, by the way. <laughs> That's a wrap. Impressive. Wow.
Yeah, played played super well by both players. But um, I wish I was dead's grip. Game three seemed a little unbeatable, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Oh yeah, he opened up like all the extenders, like he even had the equation in his hand to start too. Again, I'm just impressed that that played all through Nibiru, like convincingly, right? Yeah. You said it looked like a pretty mid board, but hey, that was more than enough to beat the, the three cards that he had to face down in hand. So, all I gotta say about this is good. that Firewall is bigger than ever. <laughs> it is bigger than ever, wow. And it's in finals, that's incredible. I can't believe that we got to see that. It's going to be so oh sad my, if it I just gets dumpstered by, by Perlin. I'm rich! I'm oh, rich. you actually oh are rich, God. yeah. Who voted on <laughs> I Wish I Was Dead, by the way? That's insane. <laughs> All right, who's the That's number one person who it went to? Points. Eldritch Cowboy. Thank you for voting 200,000 tickets on I Wish I Was Dead. Oh my goodness. If he had 100,000 more points, he could get the Quimbly voting. The Quimby it's voting. Quimby <laughs> voting. I don't know what that is, though. What do you mean is Quimby voting? You know, if you were rich, you would know. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I think we have... Have we finished the other one? We have uh, P-Shift in finals. Um, we'll take one second, and then we'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Joseph Rothschild here, a.k.a. MBT. Saying. And after a short break, during which I assume I wish I was dead, was recuperating, we are now entering the final round of the third week of the second season of the Master Circuit Series. I am joined, like I have been all day, by the one, the only, Nim Nim. How are you? Uh, fantastic. I am excited to get into this final. We had an incredible day of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Uh, I'm excited to see we saw a lot of new cards released with Singularity Warrior, the newest Master Duel pack. And uh, as you've said multiple times, man, Firewall is back and he's bigger than ever. He's right? bigger than ever. <laughs> he's made it all the way to the finals. <laughs> he is. Um, bigger than ever. I think the um the the deck that we were all kind of expecting to take the format by storm was Vanquish Soul, and while we did have two copies in our top sixteen, infinitely more than Cash Tira, I might add, the deck that's in finals is Pearly facing the Firewall Singularity combo video piloted by I Wish I Was Dead. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump in and see how game one is going. Excited. This has been great to watch. Uh, we watched I Wish I Was Dead multiple times on stream today too Definitely and we finally saw him win one power last game yeah so so hopefully we can see him win the last one the one that matters the most right oh unfortunately he's going to be on the back foot pearly has won the die roll which is not what you want to see looking at i wish i was dead's deck uh it looks like he was kind of banking on winning most of his die rolls <laughs> All right, we're going to do right. a quick prediction as well. 30 seconds on the clock for you to bet between I Wish I Was Dead and Key Shift as to which of these duelists will be taking home first place. I should mention that they've already talked it out and will be splitting the prize. So this is just for the viewers at home. Um, but if I was I Wish I Was Dead, I would want to I would want to be able to say that I won it. <laughs> yeah. Are you, uh, how about you share with the audience, too, what the prizing was for this event and other Master Circuit series if they want to be able to participate in them. Maybe they can get their chance to get their hands on some prizing themselves. Yeah, um, if you are... Uh, it used to be uh, for NA only, but anywhere in the world, uh, if you are uh, willing to enter this event and do have uh, a, uh, an e-commerce platform like PayPal, um, the MCS has a $1,100 prize pool split between uh, all of the top eight individuals and all of the individuals who uh, clear at all, that's top 16 and above, receive an invitation to a invitational to be held in early December with a $5,000 prize pool. Uh, it's going to have the 64 duelists who are able to clear during the four weeks of the MCS. Super excited to be casting that and super excited every week to be able to uh, put this amount of money um, on the line for an event like this, uh, in large part thanks to our sponsors like um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck, which you can visit to find the lists from this event immediately after its conclusion. Ooh! Yeah, and remember, if you do want to participate, the spots fill up quick. This was a 256-person tournament, completely filled up, and it filled up within a matter of 12 minutes. So if you want your chance to play and be a part of the MCS, definitely follow the Twitter and be ready to duel. I wish Seeing I was dead. Book of opened right off the bat, though. The Huge, card. by the way. I, that's the one card to be able to shut down this perle uh, perleap here. 
gonna flip down the plump. Nothing that the uh, the Perleaf can resolve onto. Just gonna resolve without effect. I like it. All right. So I mean, if there's any way to crack this, let's see what this five card grip that I wish I was dead is housing. If it can uh, beat through the board. Chad asking, have we seen him with That's Eclipse good. so far? We have seen him one time use Eclipse. Uh, but yes, he is on Eclipse main specifically because I believe the only deck he's scared of is exactly Pearly. And damn if the card isn't great against it. Mm -hmm. All right, right, so we're, we're starting with speaking a great card. Dark infant. Let's get the combo going. Yep. Go. All right, now that we have Ignister Island in the hand, let's let's talk about it. You've been asking me what my favorite ride would be on the Ignister Island. I'm I'm a big Ferris wheel guy. Are you? No, I don't peg you as a Ferris Ferris wheel guy. Oh, you, you can peg me on the, the Ferris coast. wheel anytime. I'm a Vision Hero hey, Ferris you know. wheel guy. <laughs> what do you uh what do you think the concessions are at the AI land? You think like you think they got to be uh like what, what what's their go-to like fair food that they have there? Uh kind of corn dog. Well, uh as a bunch of computerized creatures, I assume they like chips. <laughs> That is a knee slapper there, Mr. MBT. This is why we have you on the commentary team. It is, it is. is you you know, are the lone commentary team, bro. Actually, no, looking at the right. island, it looks like there's not too much going on. I Okay, I said Ferris wheel. Looking at it more with a little more scrutiny, I'm really into roller coasters. I'm, I'm big into roller coasters. I would go on the roller Me coaster too. that goes around the castle. Did you ever have, like, did you ever go on field trips where you were in a group with people and there was one person that wouldn't ride roller coasters because they were scared and it ruined it for the rest of the group? That's my wife, yeah. Ah, Jillian. No. That's all right. That's all right. In many, okay, let's in many ways, I missed the early part of my relationship with Jillian because um, uh, she was, like, trying to impress me. She was like, oh, this guy's way out of my league, which, of course, is true. And so she would go on, like, roller coasters and stuff. <laughs> and now that, you know, she has a little more say in the relationship, she's like, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, actually, I'm petrified. It's like, yeah, I never really liked these. Uh, I just pretend to do so that you would uh, find me attractive. We've all been she's there. She's a keeper, bro. Uh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I was really into wood coasters for a long time. But they are, as I've gotten older and my joints got more creaky, they are not as kind to me. They're hard. We had this one near us at the, we have, in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. there was this, uh, there is this amusement park called Kennywood, and they mm -hmm. have this wooden roller coaster called the Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's older than, like, the hills, bro. It's ancient, but that thing, it rides, it moves, and it, it'll rock you if you're not ready for it. See, but that's part of the thrill, is the concept that, like, this was built before the modern understanding of safety standards, and you could die. That's, maybe that's part of the fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going for the Dark Templar Adagnister here. You've seen this combo a couple of times in top four already. Um, what we do here is send the Gachiri, and then, of course, we can go into the second Dark Infant Adagnister. Uh, use its effect to change it to Divine. Move it over one, then summon three monsters from the graveyard, at which point the firewalls start firing. How many firewalls have we seen in I Wish I Was Dead, Zach? We've seen his, three his different firewalls, His end contains right? three firewalls, if uninterrupted. <laughs> And it's going to be really rough for P-Shift because if you are unfamiliar with these cards, my friend Pearly only triggers if a face-up Pearly Xyz uh, leaves the field because of an opponent's card. So if it's face down at the point that it is targeted by a Firewall Dragon and bounced, well, uh, too bad. Yep. Hilariously, Chad well, is like I wish right. I was dead has been able to go off... Uncompete, un unimpeded too. So unless there's a Nibiru tucked away in P-Shift's hand, I'm sure this is going to be able to dismantle this board pretty efficiently, right? And as we've seen in previous matches, uh, even without Nibiru, you know, there's a lot he can accomplish. Um, yeah. No, chat's completely correct, by the way. Um, despite the fact that this is uh, Adagnister, there are no um, arrival Cybers in the extra deck. Uh, we just got an animation and everything. He's just not playing them. You ever Wouldn't seen Pegasus this effect activated, by the way? I, I'm gonna, I was literally about to say, absolutely not. I have never seen that used before. That's crazy. It's yeah, it's, it's just a, Heavy Storm. Heavy that is insane. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, it, it's shocking. Um, Attic Nister is one of those archetypes that, like, there was a short period uh, 
during like PPG Oticon times, remember when we commentated that? Where, oh, uh, yeah, man, that brings me back. Yeah, a couple of people in the DMV area were tinkering with Adagnister, and they would, like, come to Dream Wizards and stuff, and I would be like, this deck is unbelievable. I was like, why aren't people playing this? It's so strong. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of these cards are proving why. I, the fact that all it needed was the most mid-boss ever in Singularity should probably clue you in that something's yeah. up. I was, uh... That was that was still pre-circular at that time, wasn't it? We didn't have circular. It was pre-circular, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like the very beginning of coming back from COVID, right? Yeah, and I actually, I, funny enough that you bring up that PPG, I'm pretty sure, wasn't it, wasn't it Logan JYA won with the uh, Ignister deck? No, no, it was um, Tim someone. I would have to look it up. I think I have his deck profile on my channel. Simpler times, bro. We were wearing some uh, some nice attire Tim for that event. We had the uh, yeah. sometimes. All right. So I wish I was dead. Literally, just in the kitchen right now. He's, he's chefing. Gonna be able he's to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mordred says, "I don't want to live in a world where Cybers wins an event." Get off your alt, Josh. <laughs> this is based i don't know what to tell you yeah <laughs> pearly will never win an mcs because the people who bring it to mcs's are filled with hubris dovetail echo like greek parable posting all right here's dark fluid and that's the last chance to look at me hector now we have monster negation as well so if there is an abiru in the hand it is too late this is my favorite part of the combo. It is just so funny. G Golem Crystal Heart with the 54% win rate. I imagine most of that is I wish I was dead over the course of this tournament. Definitely. He's been the one booing it. Can't wait to see how the uh, the arrival Ignister deck here. Well, not even arrival. Arrival's not even in the list. Can't wait to see how this ranks on the uh, Master Duel meta ladder after we get the statistics in, right? After after <laughs> Cash Tier gets knocked out. <laughs> after Cash Tier gets knocked out. Two Tone got Spiral on there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It is one thing I really appreciate about I Wish I Was Dead is, I mean, he plays these dog shit decks. Like, I think we can honestly say, I, I don't expect that this deck is like the next big thing in Master Duel, right? Um, but he really does not, I mean, knock on wood, does not really make mistakes. Um, we see a lot of people who can show up with like Pearly and they maybe make a missequence or um, make the wrong read and it costs them like a lot. Because the decision points in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now are just so absolutely um, overwhelming. Uh, but I wish I was dead is like, no, I know what every card does. I have complete mastery over it. And I have played this matchup 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of people some time to be able to pick up even just like linear combos and stuff like that, right? But like, uh, it seems like I Wish I Was Dead has internalized all of it for, like you said, even some of the most outlandish decks in the game. Like, he'll know these lines that just come up. Uh, nothing him. gets fa past him either. Nibiru's nothing. They yeah, we can watch him play the Nibiru it. setup. It's just like, oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> all right, going into another Link monster. This is the Splash Mage, the Royal Rare one, by the way. Beautiful. This is a little different than normal. Uh, we're using the Singularity here to reborn uh, a monster to pair with the Splash Mage rather than using it to reborn the Firewall directly. Um, we are also under the uh, Circular this turn, so we really only have the one attack. Uh, I believe Dark Fluid goes up to 8,000 if we don't lose any of its uh, tokens. So I imagine that's mm -hmm. the uh, the goal. There's also an access code that we can just make here and launch these off here right they're they're face down they're not doing anything literally not even posing a threat but honestly uh, no reason to i think the firewall is a little more yeah flexible here um the singularity already pops them right mm -hmm. i mean there it is anyways like i said it's yeah, like sure. you can probably assume <laughs> that the last two cards in hand are literal blanks they, yeah. they probably don't do anything at all so gotta literally beat up the rest of the board here make a push for game Ooh, chat's correct. Um, the circular this time was summoned with the Alan Bershon, uh, not via its own effect. Oh, so it didn't even lock. Okay. Yeah. That's why we don't have, I think, a Sigma in rotation. Yeah. All right, let's eat that pearly. 
Eat that plumpy. Worst case scenario, we walk into an Ibiru here, but we are well over lethal. Yep. Wow. I mean, the and Book you know, of Eclipse it... literally being the difference to winning that game. I, I think without that Book of Eclipse, I wish I was dead. Might have had a little bit of trouble navigating that board, right? But that's but, why uh, it's in. That's why it's in the deck is uh, because this yeah. is the matchup he's afraid of. That's it. Like um, oh, runic uh, runic fur hire. It's got a very very finite amount of non-engine spaces, and he's dedicated them to the matchup he's playing in finals. We'll see if it works out, but it certainly helped him push through game one. And that's again, that's just that targeted hate. You got to see what you're going to be playing up against. And obviously we we saw, I think it was a whopping 20% of the initial pool was playing Pearly. Yep. So, I mean, if you put in a card that's going to help you against that matchup, uh, the most of the time you're going to be playing against that deck anyway. So it's pretty good. And there's a lot of decks like this, like uh, the aforementioned Runic Fur Hire, um, that are incredibly powerful, but just a lack of non-engine spaces means that they need a metagame that is very, very specific. Um, that has multiple decks that all lose to the same card uh, to really thrive. And, I mean, we are now potentially in a metagame where the top decks are Pearly, which has a problem with Book of Eclipse, Vanquish Soul, which kind of has a problem with Book of Eclipse, um, and Math Mech, which kind of has a problem with Book of Eclipse, and, uh, well, you know, <laughs> suddenly it becomes a little less difficult. Mm -hmm. You now get to see, like we said, different from the Swiss rounds that we saw, we get to see uh, a best two out of three in Top Cut. That's what we've been watching all day. So we get to see the players dig into their side decks and put a couple cards in that might be a little bit better against the matchup. So um, if, if even if uh, I wish I was dead, made it to Top Cut, assuming there's no Pearly in Top Cut, we can mm -hmm. trade out those Book of Eclipses for obviously better cards at that point. Uh, so. so what we're seeing from um, the... Pearly Duelist is not surprising. Um, it's a lot of the cards that you would expect Pearly to be boarding. A lot of the cards that uh, post-board you probably have to look out for. Um, we've seen I Wish I Was Dead's side deck a number of times now, and unsurprisingly, it is more prepared for Pearly than Pearly's is for Cyburst Combo. And uh, yeah. unfortunately, winning uh, Game 1 is a really bad position for the Pearly player to be in, uh, because it is one of the most easily hateable out decks in the format. You've got everything from Triple Tactics Thrust for Herald, to Kaijus, uh, to Books. Um, I mean, the deck loses to almost every single piece of non-engine. Once your opponent makes a dedicated bush to be playing those pieces of non-engine, you kind of got an uphill battle. So your, your game plan massively shifts in games two and three. And you are way more disfavored than you would be in a scenario where you win the die roll and can expect to just sit on a noir for a couple of turns. Mm -hmm. There are ways to play around those those targeted side deck cards we saw in an earlier match, actually. Like being able to keep a early quick play to summon a black cap from deck to maybe... Uh, Fade away a, uh, a Herald of the Abyss is mm -hmm. a, an important play to be able to recognize, especially coming into a game two where the side deck is intact. So um, we're definitely going to have to play on our A game to be able to beat that coming from the side deck from I Wish I Was Dead. And notably... But, uh, like I said, I, it's all knowledge. Yeah, a lot of uh, those sideboard options uh, can kind of be cured um, by playing a, a specific uh, series of cards in the extra deck. Um, the Ghost Trick Pearly lists that we saw all day have kind of a natural immunity to um, the uh, Heralds because they'll end on Dark Angel, which is a Dark Fairy. Uh, Angel of Mischief, rather. Um, this is not playing Ghost Trick cards, and therefore does still have that weakness, um, but it is playing a significant amount of Shadow cards that give it a lot of strength when going first, you know? Um, that's a floodgate that's almost impossible for I Wish I Was Dead to out uh, just by virtue of not playing like a non-engine that deals with it outside of the Book of Eclipse. So uh, they are both uh, just jumping in momentarily. We will see how it goes. I imagine P-Shift will be going first, but um, I am excited either way. Uh, I, I can't wait to cast more of this silly-ass deck. Yeah, I'm excited. Maybe I, I can... can I Wish I Was Dead clutch out another going second like that. Book of Eclipse was enough to do it. I'm curious he to see is, if he He has won so many games going second where I go, there's just no way, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right? There's no You're way. like, that's as good as over, and then just never fails a surprise. Oh, Kieran is actually in uh, in chat saying that they and I Wish I Was Dead have been relentlessly testing uh, this deck, have put in the hours, and uh, are very prepared for matchups like this. So we'll see if that testing comes to fruition. Um, 
It's like it's paid off so far, entry. right? This is the longest coin flip ever. <laughs> Open the eclipse right. side action. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we could be crowning a new MCS champion this game here. This could be a game, uh, a match deciding game. Or will we see the coveted game three? I'm excited. Excited. Hmm. I hope this isn't bugged. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Master Duel does have a bug that occasionally prevents you from watching a game in a room. I hope that we are not experiencing it. I think they're just chilling. Let's reload Master Duel and see if it fixes the problem. All right. While we take a moment, chat, uh, remember that if you're enjoying this commentary for the first time, be sure to follow the MBT channel here. Uh, the MCS is every other week, so you guys will be able to see another one. Is it every? Well, wait, when's the next one, right? You said the next it's one the 25th is, or something? Uh, yeah, it's going to be the weekend of the 25th. I believe that's Saturday, which means that signups will go up at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday the 22nd at, at MCS Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. And those spots fill up super, super quick. So you definitely want to be following to get your chance to play. Remember, anybody in the world can participate in the MCS Season 2. Season 1 was NA only, but as long as you're willing to duel, you can find a seat. All right, here we go. We're getting in there. Game 2. All right, beginning with a copy of Sleepy Memory is not... It's not bad. So we're going to pitch that delicious, and when you're pitching a quick play uh, to the quick plays, either your hand is incredibly good, and as a result, you're not really concerned about anything, or uh, your hand has a ton of non-engine. And if that's the case, things are going to be very difficult for I Wish I Was Dead. Yep. Ooh, maybe a little less you difficult with Droll and Lockbird in the opener. Called by one yeah, time. that's a really good one against, uh, against Pearly here. Ooh, looks like it has resolved. And no answer. That's pretty tough. Mi Amigo looking pretty bad here. My <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Mi Amigo is not uh, helping me out here. We're going to activate it out of just a stunt on him, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, you want to be able to float. Here we can use the uh, the Pearl yeah. Lily to grab the delicious. We can go into Plumpy, which is not nothing, uh, but it's close to nothing. Uh, if we've hard opened the Pearl Leap, we can get to a two activation Noir. Uh, because we led with Sleepy Memory, uh, which is hard to get through on a five-card hand, certainly. Mm -hmm. Now we get to see if the rest of those cards are maybe just more quick plays, which is doubtful, or if they actually are just non-engine that we're going to have to sit on and hope it's enough to win the game on the crack back here. Like I said, given the pitch, I think we can probably infer it's non-engine. And if it's non-engine that doesn't contest Troll and Lockbird, it's got to be like Floodgate trap cards that are going to immediately win the game versus I Wish I Was Dead. Uh, or they're going to be like Maxi, um, which is really good. <laughs> or maybe we drew four quick plays, you know, who knows. Uh, hmm. So here's an interesting fact. We could theoretically get to a... Three activation noir provided I wish I was dead has nothing to activate for the rest of the turn and the entire hand is quick plays. Alright, so there's one. That was three materials. We can use the plumpy effect. To target the sleepy memory and get up to four. So all we need is one more quick play and we can end on Noir. But then all our eggs are in that basket versus an I Wish I Was Dead who is, I mean, quite literally just going to be able to, you know, probably access some part of the side deck. Looks like we are going to go for the sleepy memory. That's we it. set two. I'm trying to think what we can expect those two to be. Powerful, powerful floodgates, I would imagine. We've seen the one of leap get drawn a lot of times here. I wouldn't be surprised to see it again. It wouldn't be too bad. Uh, mm, we're looking in standby. We do have a uh, a sleepy memory set. 
It's actually held on I wish I was dead. I think what's going on here, yeah, is we're thinking about Book of Eclipse to chase out a yeep before the effect of Sleepy is activated, which means that I wish I was dead has definitely drawn to Book of Eclipse. There's the yeep that we, uh, we saw too, the one of Hold the... up. This doesn't do what you want. Unless we have another piece of non-engine here. Yeah, I think if you have the read that it's a yeep, you just kind of have to let your opponent flip it, right? Yeah. Now yeah. this is put, Expected. I wish I was dead in a really, So really if the set card is a here, quick play, we have effectively played around this card, but if it's Ooh. not, we lose. Hold my breath. Is this going to resolve? It's going to resolve. It's just a... We do. We did set the quick play. Wow, really heads up play out of P-Shift. Yeah. Do we have the Ash Blossom? Mm -hmm. We do. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a sequence. Oh. And here we're just going to fire off Noir as much as we can. Uh, use the effect I mean, why to, not? Yeah. I imagine, uh, stick some cards back at the bottom of the deck. Um, theoretically, there's scenarios where, like, having monsters in the grave could translate to extenders. So we'll get the Ash and the Droll before having to send this card to the graveyard. Wow, 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 wow. Well, okay, so that was really yeah, I good. Wish I was dead. We still do need an Achichi. Yeah, we need an Achichi or, uh, I mean, does any... Circular does Technically, it? any Ignister do, does it? Does any Ignister do the job? Because we get the Island with it. Um, I think Picari also does it. Okay. All right, Noir is removed, and since Speaking it was removed of... by your opponent, because they have to pick, my friend doesn't trigger. There's Picari. Oh, I think that's it. Chainable. Holy smokes. What is the card in hand? That's a great question. So, the card in hand is the Singleton Draw off of the, uh, the Plumpy. If it's an Ash Blossom, you can spawn with it there. You can try to trade it for the Dark Infant here. I think you always Ash here if you if you if it is Ash Blossom. I think this is the only like interaction that you could. It's it's something. Is it Droll? No, it wasn't. If it wasn't Droll, it would have been able to activate after the Picari ad. Chat says it's actually not activatable. It's the per leap in graveyard that's giving the activation window. Oh, that's okay, okay. A pretty interesting. It's a read. ruse. That's what it is. <clears throat> I mean, if I wish I was dead, goes off unimpeded here. He's won the finals too well. I mean, you have to go for it, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think the only thing you possibly lose to is like a top deck to Nibiru the Primal Being. Specifically like that. I mean, even from that position, provided you can figure out a way to put up any sort of interaction, you're contesting one activation of a quick play spell, right? Because it has to go for yeah, the Yeah, I don't uh, know if you pitch. can get there. I don't know if you can get there before five, though. That's the problem. It doesn't mean if you, it doesn't matter if you get there before five. It just means if you get there after five. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so heads up from I wish I was dead too, being like, no, I opened two pieces of non-engine. We're going to trade one for a draw. Mm -hmm. These two to the grave. We are going to go for the transcode talker. And I wish I was dead's uh, testing circle is now in the chat. There is no longer a card in the game that can stop this. <laughs> They've already mapped it out. They've I, already you said know what? it's I, over. I like where, I uh, where your head's at. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> <clears throat> Feel bad. You know what I didn't do this round, Joseph? 
I didn't bet any of my points. Oh, I didn't want to lose my uh, my freshly minted a hundred thousand MBT bucks. I just I couldn't bring myself to to double down on it. You missed the uh, mint I really event. We got it. I should have. <laughs> Card in hand is Gores. Well, that wouldn't do it because we do have a card on our yeah, side of the field. Yeah, because we have a face down. We do have a face up spell or trap. Oh, if we go for the 8,000 attack off the uh, dark fluid, we can hit him with Mahata the Fairy. Familiar with that card? No, no I'm not. <laughs> Actually, what even is that? I gotta look that up. Mahata Ooh, chat, the chat fairy? is right there. Is a card. Havness. Havness the <laughs> three. How do you know? How do you just internalize these awful cards? Uh, this this might be one of the worst card, things I've ever read. Uh, was not only part of a limited format I played, it was also a uh, playoff staple. It's just a free guy. Playoff staple. Playoff staple. <laughs> <laughs> it's a burn spell, too. You better watch out for it in Prague. You get to 2019. <laughs> and Alex is playing Chain Burn. Don't give, Simo, yeah, don't give him any ideas, bro. <laughs> yeah. Alex, if you're watching, Mahata, that's where it's at. Going for Wind Pegasus, add in Suster here. Uh, this is protected by Happy. Um, we probably don't pop it anyway because we want to play around Gores. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Two fours on our side of the field. we got to get that Xyz again. Does Battle Fader save them here? Uh, no. Uh, Dark Fluid will negate the Battle Fader. <clears throat> Yeah, as soon as this next summon hits the board, there is no more interaction. All right, well, not the next summon. Maybe the summon after, whatever. The one <laughs> that like, yeah, we got some fluid. time. Don't worry. Yeah, there becomes there becomes zero more, like, zero interaction from P-Shift to, to get him out of this situation. Just going through the motions. I wish I was dead. Very confident, like we were just talking about. Knows all the lines. And if he gets stopped at any line, he can fix up his board to a place where I think he'll find his way through. It's just honestly really inspiring. I remember back in the day, there were so many duelists like this, you know, Robbie with gadgets and stuff, uh, who just, like, understood a deck at a level that other people couldn't comprehend. And from that position, were able to just wield an, an unparalleled knowledge of the deck to finishes in places where it really should not be finishing, right? Like, uh, really deep in, like, the teens, uh, M. Cole 40 was winning events with uh, gadgets. And it's just, it is inspiring, even at a time when Yu-Gi-Oh has become so much more complex and so much more, um, it, it is coalesced around the same, like, four or five decks. When the metagame is, uh, so different than the, uh, the rogue decks, it's just wonderful to see a duelist who's like, nope, I have complete mastery over this typing, and as a result, I'm going to make some plays that you could not possibly fathom. You really did prove that Firewall is back. And bigger and Joseph, than ever. He's bigger than ever. He's bigger than ever. Oh my god. He's, he's so it's crazy, big. man. Out of all the cards from the new set, I actually didn't expect to see the new Math Mech ones. I, especially after the first few rounds we commentated. <laughs> I did not expect to see them do this well. Oh. Uh, for for those of you who are asking why not just go combat with the dark fluid here, um we have to back it up with something because the dark fluid having to contest a card in hand would potentially bring it below 8,000. So we do have to go through the big line. I apologize to those of you who don't want to see the big line. Yeah, just not flexing on him. We're, we're actually making optimal plays here. Yeah. And you know what? There's no time limit in the finals. There was no time limit throughout the entire top cut. He can take as much time as he wants. Mm -hmm. But we're under circular. It doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm referring to here is, like, if it's a Bistial in hand, it's important to be able to bounce the Bistial and then attack with the 8k guy. I think if it's Nibiru, not only have you missed your opportunity to Nibiru, um, you would just negate it and go for lethal the next turn. Yep. <laughs> he really is bigger than ever. He's He's huge. Can we make access code? Nope. Access code is not lethal because we are not playing Update Jammer. I promise you we are doing everything we have to here. <laughs> I 
<laughs> equation. Oh, this is my favorite part of the combo. Alan Bershin underneath Singularity. Tribute Alan Bershin to proc Singularity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of silly. <laughs> I don't know how we came up OG this. Firewall. Out of curiosity, does anybody in chat prefer the alt art firewall? Oh, There's two no. different alt arts, actually, oh, isn't God. there? The red one or the grabby one? Absolutely not. The red one's not that bad. The grabby one is Disgusting. abhorrent. That one's like that one's pretty bad, but Yeah. Yeah, the red one I could I guess under certain conditions I could get that. Okay, theoretically we could stop from this position, but I, I want to see how much further we can go. <laughs> he earned it at this point. Yeah, exactly. Definitely earned it. We better end on Heat Soul Pass. Bro is doing 40 doing summons. His play, around, uh, his play around Maxi is summon 37 times. Wants to show off the end board. Let's go. Single-handedly spiking the win rate of this heat soul. Oh wait, we yeah, got more. Fifty-three point four. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put access code on this end board. Wait, what's the last card in the extra that's not access code? Did you use oh. both infants? We did use both infants. Let me look it up. It's not the G Golem. He summoned the G Golem earlier. Yeah, legitimately, I don't know. He put back the G Golem. Oh, it was put back? Yes, we have made okay, so every card in the extra deck this turn, but we put one back. <laughs> okay. Playmaker has now come home to roost. We have every one of his aces on the field at the same time. No way he's popping off access code. <laughs> Not said, respecting gores. Actual animal to, behavior right I'm now. going to legitimately destroy <laughs> this my friend Pearly as many times as it takes. All right, combat. Let's do 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get one shot. I don't really know what to say but that. That's just it. Wow. Holy smokes. What a finals. And I wish I was dead in a convincing 2-0. Annihilates Pearly to win the third week of the Master Circuit Series with one of the strangest decks I think we've ever seen take it. Oh, yeah. For sure a sleeper pick. It was a pleasure to watch him combo all through. Like you said, just showing an absolute mastery of even the most obscure decks, able to take it all the way to the finals. That's what it takes to be a Master Circuit Series champion. Legitimately, all I can say is <laughs> Firewall is back, and he is bigger than ever. He is ever. bigger than ever, bro. Bigger than ever. <laughs> oh, my God. It. Huge, huge congratulations to I Wish I Was Dead. That's an unbelievable accomplishment, proving that the newest set's best card is legitimately the cover card. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess if that's it. If you guys it. enjoyed the commentary, this was great, man. This was an awesome, again, always I like cut popping in when the mm. new sets come out. You always see something that uh, manages to surprise you. We did see uh, Vanquish Soul get some top cut spots. Uh, it was awesome to watch those players. Definitely showing a little bit of expertise there. Uh, and awesome to just see some new cards in action. And thank you so much for, for doing this. I know it's a, a, uh, a huge imposition to do 11 hours of commentary, but you, you absolutely killed it. Um, and, uh, oh, I don't I'm, mind it. Thanks for having me, bud. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you. I'm so happy to have all of you chat uh, participating in these events. Without your consistent support, you know, these wouldn't be as cool as they are. Um, as well as the support of uh, Rebecca, who does all the TO work. Uh, Kevin, behind the scenes, um, does a lot of on-site bot support. And, of course, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck for bankrolling a significant portion of the Master Circuit Series. Uh, that is YGOPRODECK.com, which you can go to by the end of today, I believe, in order to find the lists from this event. Um, any closing thoughts?
No, I'm excited to see uh, the Master Circuit Series in the next two weeks. Remember, guys, if you want to be a part of the action, you can. Anybody can. You just have to follow the Twitter at MCS. Is it at MCS? At MCS Yu-Gi-Oh! Or something Yu-Gi-Oh, like that? one word. Yeah. If you follow them, uh, just keep an eye out for when the registration goes live. The spots fill up super quick. It'll be the Wednesday you can before have your the chance at, at 5 p.m. Yep. Eastern Standard Time. This next one is on the 25th. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out and uh, chilling with us, too. It was a nice uh, 10 hours of commentary. I had a great time. <laughs> it was. It was a long one. Uh, but that's what happens during Pearly format. Uh, I guess I would say um, uh, Cash Tira Tier 0, uh, Cyburst Firewall, complete nonsense. Uh, buyout uh, Jiao Long, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I guess, okay, the final thought we have to end on, man, is I heard about this guy. His name's like firewall dragon yep and i heard he's i heard he's back no way i heard he's back bro you know what i heard about him yeah i heard he's back and he's bigger than ever bro Whoa! he's bigger than ever <laughs> can't believe it man what have a, a good one everyone what a tournament. Can we see it now bro what the hell and then it's like lava golem lava golem and then numeronis numeronia there he is now the problem this board, uh, the problem with this deck is you have Mardell in your deck.